small camera. It's all good, man. We having a good time. Listen, man, Big Act in the building, man. Big Act, big folks, big podcasts, uh, big off the record. Hey, mm-hmm. listen, it's very rare that I bring a non-artist on here. I bring somebody who, number one, I think is very important to contextualize the story. Everybody knows about me. When, if you think about my past, my history, people will consider the war in Chirac. People will consider my coverage of Chicago as a very important thing that kind of changed media in a way, but also changed music in a way, and even probably put Drill in a position that has changed and affected and really went around the world. Now, I've always told people this. When I was doing the war in Chirac, I was a kid in Jersey. I was very inquisitive. I did do a lot of research. I was never on the ground. It took me years after the fact to even really learn some of the real nuance of what was really happening. And as a lot of people really think that was like this big expert. I mean, maybe expert on the things that y'all thought I was talking about. But to really understand, it took me talking to people who really lived there, people who really had these experiences. And this is an episode that I felt I had to do. We have to correct Maybe some of the inconsistencies or maybe some of the misnomers that happened when it came to the war in Chirac. And I have a special guest with me today. Someone, if you are familiar with the Chicago region, period. Someone who's reputable. Someone who, listen, his story, like, we're going to get into it. But it's it's one of the most historic stories when it comes to that region. Uh, I'm here with big folks, man. What's popping, my brother? Man, love. Appreciate you for having me, baby. About time. <laughs> uh, first time I ever met you. Yes, it is. And um, you, you know what I used to think, though? I always thought, I always thought, I said, if I run into any of these, like, OG Chicago things, they probably hate the <laughs> shit out of me. Nah, not true. You're huh? all spots, man. You're all, like, like you, you, got, you got good, good energy, though. Nah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Because to me, you did nothing to us, but it was free marketing. Yeah. You didn't cause nobody in Chicago no harm. I mean, you know, a, a couple people gonna be like, "Well, he hiding the war. He did this and that." But you were outsider. How could we let an outsider uh, hiding a gangster city to do anything? And I think that's the important part. Chicago. What people don't understand about the war in Chirac, right? I was appalled. Mm-hmm. I'm appalled by what I was. Seeing. I couldn't even imagine. I remember watching CNN. And they're like, "Yo." There's three insurgents that died in Afghanistan. And I'm like, nigga, there's like 50 people that got shot in a no, weekend in Chicago. Talk. How real are we talk. not covering this? For whatever reason, the mainstream media, CNN, Fox News, they ignored a lot of the gun violence that was happening in the inner city of Chicago. And I couldn't understand why. Mm. Is it because it was black and brown people that were you know, being affected? Is it because there was not a lot of money happening? And I remember looking at some of the music that was coming out of it. And at first, I was like, any fan. I'm like, yo, this shit is lit. Mm-hmm. But then I start seeing, I'm like, yo, it, it, drill music is great when you're not thinking about when they're saying we're smoking on so-and-so. You're not even thinking about that person as an actual yeah, person Yeah, you're not thinking died. about the consequence. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, these niggas is talking about something that really fucking happened, a real human being. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember like I remember somebody said they were smoking on somebody, and then I seen a picture of that person laying in the casket. And, oh, and, yeah. and, and, and like it just spoiled my day. I was just like, yeah. you can't even do that in good faith anymore. So anyway... The reason why I got you here is to really help tell the story of Chicago. Mm. But I want to tell it in an authentic way. All right. Um, For what an outsider like me knows, when it comes to most of the gang warfare that kind of like turned into a lot of drill music and other things that played out, we have the GDs and the BDs, right? Mm -hmm. Give me, you know, give me a little bit of not only your history, but uh, how, like people know LA for like Bloods and Crips have been into it. Why is the GDs and the BDs? Why are they into it like that historically? I mean, historically, we supposed to all been one. Really? In the beginning, we all was one. Are we still supposed to be one? You know, under the One Love Act, you know what I'm saying? Under the Six, you know, we we supposed to be together, you know what I'm saying? But things transpired in the city back in the days, wars. You know, we got real real wars over projects and. Other things that transpired to make a lot of GDs, because G- Chicago is a GD based ran city back, you know what I'm saying, as far as gang days, you know what I'm saying? We was the majority. So So the GDs were the majority. Always. Because through music, and even like with New York now, I'm like, yo, man, I feel like the like even with Ruga making a song like yo, they let they finally <laughs> the GDs in the door. And I'm like, damn, like if if I'm a gang member, and, and not that you probably get a chance to pick, because you probably it's about who you grew up with, who's your peoples, whatever, but it's like 
if you're a BD, it seems like the, the path is paved. It's almost like it's a paved road. <laughs> but if you're a GD, everybody act like they don't like you. Like, you have regular fans. That's come to music. GDK. And, and, and to me, that's ridiculous. But why does it seem in music that the BDs are just like the pop? Because they got off first. Mm. Chief Keef blew up. Chief Keef was new, fresh, special, something new. The world caught on to it. He's a BD. And there you have it. Now, if Duck would have jumped off first, it probably would have been vice versa. Been something else. Oh, yeah, because all the fans, everybody else is going to follow whatever was going to lead. You know what I'm saying? They led. So The drill scene and the music side. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying they was winning the war in Chirac or they was on the streets and this and that. A lot of them was getting punished left and right. Remember, a lot of your reports was mostly on them dying. So it's just like, yeah. yeah, so it's like, you know. Uh, unfortunately, nobody ever really like no one gang really, really ran Chicago. It's like it's gonna be going up, but the, we all the GDs always been the majority of my life. I'm 44 today. The majority of my life, we always been the majority. But I also was uh, I'm old enough and young enough, but old enough to know when when I started seeing a lot of GDs flip BD mm. for various reasons, different shit. You know what I'm saying? Certain people getting killed, certain politics, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, so before we, you know, even get into which a lot of people kind of term as the the drill movement start and really transpired and continued to the world with Chief Keef and Dirk and everybody else, let's go back to your era because mm. you're a generation before all these these these. Yeah, I, was these born, people. I, I was born in the '80s, so my all my coming up is through the '90s. Okay, early 90s, you know what I'm saying? D describe what it's like in Chicago then, because I remember even covering Chicago. And a lot of times I would look at crime stats and I'm like, I would then compare it to the 90s. I was like, damn, what the fuck was, it was killing crazy back then too. But obviously there wasn't, the music wasn't fused with the murders as much. So we didn't understand what's going on. So explain what Chicago is in the 90s. Worse than it is now. Like, Well, well I, what I say is our city was more organized. It wasn't no just really... Wow, so you probably wouldn't even have the drill. You didn't have the drill scene back there. You wouldn't have had it because then there's too much talking, too much information being given, going back and forth, and most of all our shit go off silence and secrecy. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm. like that would have been just like violating that completely. Just even them rapping about real shit. So in my era, it's just different. You know what I'm saying? That's why you had people like friendly rappers, like a Twister or some shit like that, because it was safe. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, like uh, so, so, so in in your era in Chicago, how does it work? Because like I'm thinking of on the LA type of thing would be like, yo, hey, this whole block, just your whole know family this. take is... that out your mind because Chicago and LA is two different animals. So, 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 how do you decide that? Like you're a GD, right? Like how mm -hmm. do you decide you're gonna get down with the gangster disciples? Like you born in a certain neighborhood, your people, your family is that. Most of us is like uh, born, like born in it. It's like. If I'm born in this area right here, I grew up bad. When I turned 13, I'm running around this bitch, I'm half bad, you know. My folks got to, in my area, they made us go to school and all that. It wasn't just, oh, we could, we, we hanging on the block, it's, oh, we gang, gang. No, nah, it was more about teaching us how to develop to be grown, like, to be men. It was, they wasn't teaching us kill this and do this and that. It was more, it was more on the, I ain't gonna say Black Panther, but we was getting taught, like, literature, bro. Like, we was getting taught shit. We, the shit that we know, you probably still don't know as a grown man. We was getting mm. taught as kids. Really? So, you know, it's shit like this simple shit that I learned that I take it like for me. Like, uh, we had something called the duck. What's that? And the duck, you know what I'm saying? What what let me ask you this. What what's the only thing that can hurt a duck, like in the wild? What 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 what's the reason for them to get killed? Maybe a hunter? I don't know. Oh no, the hunter is the one that kill him. The hunter looking for him. But what 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 alerts the hunter? His beak. Mm. So if you keep your beak closed. They won't be able to get you because they won't know nothing. But so you open up your beak. Now we know everything. Now we can, you know what I'm saying? The people could take you down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a good thing to learn. So, and I, and I want a little bit of your story too because, you know, I, I've just heard, like, I feel like this shit could be a Netflix special. So you're growing up in the um, 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, I'm guessing you, you grew up on a block. You, you I grew up you, on the low end, so I was in buildings and shit. I'm from a neighborhood called South Commons. We had high rise project buildings right to us, uh, Prairie Courts, Dillborns, Stateway, all the legendary projects, Robert Taylor. It's like I come from the low end. I, I explain to people who've never been to Chicago. So, like these project buildings, are they like just subsidized ho housing for low income people or what? It was the projects, like yeah, like 
But they gone now, you know, they tore our projects down. They, mm. I think they still got buildings for Greeny Greens, but I mean, that shit gone. That shit been gone since the early 2000s. Okay, so, so so you start moving around then. Are you, you know, are you like heavy in the street? Like, Yeah, I'm fucking around. Mm. So, I got friends in LA already. They sending me bricks. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm getting busy already. One thing we, we, we like, even me covering like in Chicago, right? And when I, when I started doing it in the war in Chirac, right? Mm. One thing that was missing was like, where's the commerce? Where's the money? Like, where is the where is the can people? I can I uh, incite on that real quick? Yeah. When I had a little mouse in this drill scene, I named my label Hella Bands and Music Group. Why I act? I I could have named it some gang shit. I could have named it all the type of shit in the world, but it was focused on Hella Bands because that very thing. Like, nigga, we some Chicago niggas. We really get money. We really get money. It really was a time where like the murder, all that shit over block over money. It turned into what it turned into, uh, senseless. But Chicago, where we come from, our foundation as a whole is money. Even our shorties now, they could be wild and loose, but I bet you they're going to have some money. Mm-hmm. I bet you they're going to be the freshest niggas. Like, when you look at it, like, culturized, like, rap shit and this and that, I bet you nobody dressed better than our shorties. I bet you just, they be sitting around bagged up, crazy whips and all that shit. They own cribs, all type of shit already. They buying the best guns in the world, all type of shit. It's always been about money in Chicago. Don't get it fucked up because the, the people at the gang banging and the killing blind them. But niggas, those little boys running around this bitch with hundreds, hella yeah. money. So, I, I, and, and I'm wondering um, in, in terms of like I've always said, like how do people like move through Chicago and not get hurt? Man, you no know? business. It's called staying out the way. Yeah, but but if you're now in okay, say you're a GD, mm-hmm. maybe other GD members got problems with BDs. Now, well, maybe some GDs got problems with the GDs. Like, niggas is, in Chicago, that gang, I mean, oh, now, you know, mind you, I, in 1993, I got plugged. I was 13. The next year after that, 94, then 95, and all that, they indicted all our heads. You know what I'm saying? They was gone off the streets. It was like, no. They indicted them? Yeah, their structure was gone. They took, they, they oblivion. It was over with. So and, now, and, and I've always heard that that's kind of the problem with the newer generation because, like, those older generation dudes are, are not on the street because no if more. they were still around this and that, even for my age generation, I, I we got loose because they had left. Mind you, I, I just get plugged GD, man. They all the leadership and all the, all the real shit that I'm learning, and they teaching us about going to school and trying to steer us into uh, being better men in, in society. That was gone, and I was like. Every man for a self free fall. Oh, folks, and I'm going. It's my. I'm doing it like. Oh, I'm the man now. This and that. So it's like all oh, like every man for himself. Like oh, now nah, he running shit like then. It's like how and this. And that. You know what I'm saying? Just power struggles. I think I was a shorty, and I was just watching from a shorty ass. But I always had a, a grown mentality. I was around a bunch of old killers and shit. So I kind of know what was going on. Like damn, it was falling apart. You know what I'm saying? On the streets. You know everybody in jail. Are you running into like these real situations where like? You know, whether people is trying to either rob you, get at you, you know. Of course. Do things. I've been shot, everything, like robbed. Only, only t- I've never been robbed in my life because when um, with my case, with my murder case when I was 17, I, I was kidnapped. You know what I'm saying? So, so you had a murder case at 17? I had a capital double murder. I faced a death penalty. Break that time down. I was 18. <laughs> okay, I, like, and I've heard vaguely about this story. I, like, mm. break this down. How does that even happen? Being you're outside, 17. <laughs> selling drugs, yeah. Being, you're 17. Being you're in out, the shit. You're outside. You're moving around. You might be moving some weight or whatever the case is. Is that, you know what? I love all my young niggas, all of them that do content, all of them that's, that's in the streets and this and that because I always had a... Uh, a distrust for the older niggas. Once the real leadership left, it was like we was left with older niggas that, were, to me, was kind of foul. Some of they was walkie, you know what I'm saying? So I always was a story like, nigga, I'm, after that, I'm about to remind you, it's 97 now. Everybody, it's been a couple years now, 97, 98. Shit, I'm doing my own. Nigga, I got friends in LA, they shooting shit to a nigga, ooh, ooh, getting my own packages, you know what I'm saying? You go to school at this point? You're 17? No, I stopped. I ain't go to school. I ain't go to uh, high school. Really? Eighth grade. What about your parents? Nigga, I got plugged. My mama, my mama's still alive. My mama was Blackstone. So, you mean? know, she was a Blackstone P Ranger. One of the most. Jeff Ford, you know what I'm saying? She's a Blackstone P Ranger. Yeah, that's what she grew up as. That's a different gang. Yeah. Okay. Well, I when she when I was born, we lived they moved to a different area. It was a GD area. 
Mm. So I grew up around GDs and some Stones, you know. So, so you just tell your mom I'm not going to high school. Well, I, I, when I grew up, my mama, um, she was working at the post office. She was good, like going through little grammar school and this and that. But then, you know, during that era, drugs and all that shit. So my grandma and them raising us, you know what I'm saying? Me and my cousins and shit. So, you know, grandma and them kind of getting old. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like, it is like niggas is bad. It's like, you know, what the fuck you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Like, they did what they could do. I had a great upbringing. My people had money and this and that. It was good. You know what I'm saying? Mm. When, uh, my first cousin in 1993, too, what happened that year, um, his mama died, got hit by a yellow taxi cab. So my family, I mean, they sued. We got, what, $6 million, $4 million, something really? like that. Yeah. So it's like that put our family in a different little you situation. Little you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, So, yeah, but, you know, then, you know, after so long, you know, grandma and moved to the suburbs, Big Creek, you know what I'm saying? But we still, right, coming to the low end. You know what I'm saying? Fucking with our people, the only people we know. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And shit happens, you know. Now, nigga, I'm in the game. I'm selling drugs. You know, I'm moving and grooving. You know what I'm saying? So, so you, you know, sometimes people look at me like, yo, what about the parents? Like, I remember thinking about well, that. Well, I can tell you about my parents. My mama was working at the post office. She got uh, got on drugs or whatever. She was doing good. And then she turned me up. She told me she was living out there with 16 from in Maywood. And she was like, I work at the post office. You know, if it was some money, they come out here like every other, uh, they get paid every two weeks. Shit. You know, like eight motherfuckers for me. Just think about it. I'm like, for like 14, 15. I might get like a half an ounce of Coke from one of my people. Go out there, bag that shit up. Wait, so, so, so your mom was like, yo, listen, this is an opportunity. Damn. Well, she, if she was going to get it from somewhere, it's like, shit, she going to do what she do anyway. But, huh, take these people too. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you ain't got to be in the streets. You don't have to be in the streets. You just got to come to the house and sit in the basement. These people will come through Thursday when they get their checks. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom. Give these people credits. The next week, they good. They going to pay you. And I'll be sitting there every two weeks, like, goddamn it, like, young, like, maybe like seven, eight thousand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shorty. Damn. Box Chevy, all that shit riding around going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Doing me, living life. Did, did at any point during that time, you're like, Maybe other people around me, like like their parents, is more pushing them to a different angle. And like your, your I parents. I grew up in the ghetto. I got the parents is like you know what I'm saying the ones that's all of them love their kids. You know what I'm saying the world we was around, but you know some of them had to work and they not there present. Some of them can't control what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's an era that the, the crack game and all these drugs. It's not now, so you can't think in this now. You got to think back there. Ain't no internet, ain't nothing. Ain't no way to see what they doing when they go outside. You know what I'm saying? But that looks that, that sounds like a controlled environment, right? Like mm -hmm. like your mom is saying, "Hey, listen, these are people they go get a paycheck." No, it was exactly a controlled environment. Okay, but suppose, so so you're not like carrying a gun or nothing like that, right? I mean, I did by the time I was fifteen and all that. Even in that environment, because it looked like you're, these are people who they, they just want to. Yeah, get a but little... I, st I still had to leave out that house. Like we got the house, that's the shield. Like, bam, mm -hmm. you can sit in the house and see and get this money. Now I got to go outside, spend them. I'm young, I'm running around, little okay, bitches okay, and shit. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah. I had yeah. a bait, I had a shorty there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Pregnant about fifteen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like shit, you know. Mm. Like, like I hate to say it, but it's like she, 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 not no niggas on the streets and like folks them taught me structure how to be a man. They it was teaching me shit. But like to get the money part, that was like even even selling drugs. Like folks was getting money in the snap, but I had something special because it's like she's bringing me the money. Yeah, she like just sit here. I don't gotta do. It. I gotta move around. I ain't gotta be outside with the gun. I could be in my boxes in her basement and shit, chilling and eating cupcakes and waiting no motherfuckers to come through with their checks. Mm. Now the bag gonna look decent because remember they been getting credit all week. If she comes, she gonna pay her little three hundred. She gonna spend two more. And he, you know what I'm saying. So, so when when you get or start getting into at least you know interacting with some of the other elements that's not that controlled, mm -hmm. where now you're like, yo, listen, man, anything could all fucking happen. Yeah, okay, so boom, she moved to the south side, bam. So now over there, her apartment and shit, uh, bam. I, I take control of them buildings over there. Where we at? Let's get into the bag. You know what I'm saying? Is there so, any competition or is this I like mean, it was, but I you know I knew I knew the right people, so that means my drugs is always good. Cause just cause you getting drugs don't mean that shit always good, right? So if somebody you could you could be right. I got bricks, nigga. I'm doing this. I can slide on the block, some glassy. Now nah, you can't even sell this shit. I'm just sitting there chilling. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I'm thinking on some wire shit. Niggas might be like, nigga, you can't work on this block, nigga. Fuck out of here, nigga. Like this my hood. This 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 my project. You can't it work. It wasn't it it like that where we was at. Mm. We was in Blue Island. There's a little project called the Blue Jets and this and that. So it wasn't no. 
I was the only threat around. I was like, I was only like monster around. There, I want to say, like on some real shit. Like, like it was, they niggas was doing shit and getting into it and holding guns and this and that. But I was already like a more little advanced because where I came from, the low end. I, I, I came with the teachings. I come with the papers. I didn't learn. Some, I, I really know what's going on. Yeah. So I, they they still like little kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm a, I'm already on some organized mind shit. I'm already moving and grooving. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. So I found some builders I can. It's all. It's always been about where I could find shelter at and then just work. Like opened up a like a store. The stores open. You know. Are your homies at this point be like, yo, bro, put us on, nigga? Like, yo, what's up? Like, yo, you got a little thing going on. You, you nah, working with your, with your with your shorty, but like now your niggas is probably seeing like, yo, yo, this thing is kind of. I mean, you got to understand, I've been independent. I believe in independency. So it ain't no homies around me while I'm getting money, nigga. Look how I started getting money. That ain't take no homies. That's my mom and I go to the crib. Mm. Now I'm used to just having my money moving around this and that. I don't do no hustling with nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm just with my niggas when it's time we hanging out doing shit, you know what I'm saying? Or some other shit. But like as far as getting money, nigga, I don't even want you to know what I really got. You know what I'm saying? That's my I'm over here getting to it and shit. My plugs come from out of, out of town always was, was good to me. I, it was years I ain't make one dollar in Chicago. Really? But I go to West Coast, Appleton, West Coast. I go to Minnesota. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Ohio, Pittsburgh, well Washington, PA. Shout out to Washington, PA. I got I made so much money up there I couldn't believe it myself. <laughs> Washington, Washington, PA. Washington, Pennsylvania. Yes. There's a place in Washington, Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, it's a city called Washington. Really? <laughs> yes. Look it up. Holy shit. Okay. I, I so happily bumped it to the, you know, it was this lady that looked like Barbara Bush. She was a billionaire up there. She, they probably still, you can do your homework on it or whatever. She owned it like the Wendy's, the fucking CV. She owned it every, the town, Washington, PA. She was a mm. billionaire. Her, 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 her grandson was my customer. He oh, controlled shit. the town, so we called him Cyrus the Virus, Jim Cyrus, because Con Air and all that shit was out there. Wait, wait, so, so what do you sell? Are you, you selling like cocaine? It's or coke. Is it? Yeah, it was coke then. Really? It was so coke. people were playing with their nose like back then. No, nah, they were smoking like crack. Spanish? They were smoking crack. Oh, so, oh, so you're this selling. Like, this, this, this is, uh, the PA shit is like in the 2000s. It's in like 2000s. Uh, Round town, right before Barack got elected, T got elected. That was the last day I was in Pennsylvania. Okay, my okay. grandma died on the day, 2000, yeah, yeah, 2008, when the president, when Barack got elected, I left that day. And I ain't go back. So, but for, I had like a three year run up there though. So from 05 to 08, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Okay, so you're 17, and you get kidnapped, and it turns nasty because a murder happens. Actually, yes. multiple. We know you're outside at this point. Mm -hmm. well, I was in the buildings, though. I was in the buildings. You're in the buildings, in the buildings. But, but also, you're hanging out there. People know you got some money now, yeah. which I would imagine if you in any type of, you know, like. Oh, no, the neighbors know. Everybody know what's going on. You know, they looking out for me. You know, even the ones that don't do drugs. They, really? you know, I'm chilling. I ain't worried about no police or nothing. So, so how do you run into a problem? What happened? Jealousy. Some old niggas came around there. Claim, they, you know, they brought something from me. You know what I'm saying? Like an ounce. Took it. Came back three days later. Oh, well, I don't even, I can't, I don't want to, oh, because, you know, my paperwork is my paper. It's, it's going to say what it, what it is. Yeah. However many days it was, they came back talking about the shit wasn't right. No problem. No problem. So, 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 so they say you sold them some food. Some yeah, weed. like I try to finesse them. Or not weed, but like whatever, whatever. Yeah, drugs. I, I try to finesse them. Mm. I say, oh, just bring did, it be back. Be honest, did you cut it? No, no, I didn't. I mean, of course, it was it was rocked up and all this, and they might have been blasted. But check this out. All right, well, just bring it back. Just bring me what I gave you. I'm gonna give y'all y'all bread back, or I'll try to give you something else. So there's a refund policy there. Man, I ain't give a fuck. I was getting it. Like I ain't about to let that stop what I got going on. A pro that's a problem for nothing. Like I was just, oh, y'all don't like it. Just bring the shit back because I got people that like it. You know what I'm saying? So whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. So so so, but it was a trick, old nigga trick. That's why I like old niggas. These niggas was 37 to 38, and I just what came from jail. And how old are you at this point? 17. Are you intimidated when you're talking to people who are in their 30s? No. Really? Because I, I looked at all the old people back then like hypes. I'm just like, man. I don't know. If like they, a fiend? Yeah, like dope fiends and crackheads and shit. Like, I get away from me. Because at that time, I'm already knowing what's in me. I just ain't, that, that don't mean I got to be the aggressive or I got to be out doing drill. Like, I just know what's, I just know don't come, don't play with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave yeah. me the fuck alone. So, so they come around there and this and that, bam. They come back talking about this bad, no problem. They come produce it back, so I ain't giving you no money back. So they just show up empty-handed, like yeah, that shit was wack. Also, goon shit. 
on some. Oh, so now they're trying to strong arm you. Like, yeah. just give us our fucking money back. I'm like, oh, yeah, or give us something. It's like, because they either smoke that shit, fuck that shit up, or fuck somebody money or whatever they did. I didn't care. I didn't have time. I'm big. I'm like, I'm really selling work. My phone really rocking. I'm really, you know what I'm saying? Let me ask you a question. So when you first did the deal, how much, like, at least back then, how much money, what, like. This is 800. 800 bucks. I, I, I was 800 then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $800 for the zip. So they basically wanted their eight hundred dollars back. You're like they weren't even asking for the money back. They like wanted some more work, and I'm just like, well, bring that back. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out or something. It's like no, nah, like no, nah, like no. Nah, 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 nah. Give me another one. You knew these niggas, like in terms of you I seen got, them around. I got introduced to them by by they they had a uh, his woman lived over there. And she used to buy work from me. So, uh, and she worked at the Durkinson building, federal building. So my, my case was crazy. <laughs> so uh, she involved, so she didn't tell them, boom, boom, boom. He got the best work over here. Go get the work from him. Yeah. They had got some type of settlement. Nigga had went and brought this car. The car that he died in, he went and brought that car, flashed his money around, mm -hmm. acting crazy. Then it's like, man, his last $800, he going to come to me, try to get an ounce. I sold it to him, bam. He Nigga, fuck it up. He fuck it up. He come back. more. So they think it's a two for one special. Yeah, I get to tell them. Ain't, ain't no, yeah, ain't no two for ones over here. I don't know what to tell them. Are, are you? And really? I wasn't being tough or none of that shit because they was older and they was aggressive, and I, and I knew what they was about. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, man, I, I'm just doing what I got to do. I don't even got it to get. Like you gonna have to give it to me so I can replace it. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you a question. Are you feeling like they're testing you in the sense of if you fold and be like, all right, man, here's uh, this. No, I'm gone. They gonna, like, they, I, it's over. I, I can forget about this now if okay, I did okay. that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, you, this you got to stand on some type of business. Okay, yeah, cool. and I wasn't no host. So it's mm -hmm. just like, all right, man, y'all tripping. I'm trying to be a business. I'm trying to, I rather, I want my money. I like the customers. I'm trying to, like, come on now, y'all tripping, man. Get it together. It's like, but well, they play. So they come back. So after them a few nights, they come. They come to the building, bam. They up two guns on me, a 38 and a 9. I'm in the hallway. I'm, they got me. It, it, so this happened on two nights, the first night and the second night. So the first night they come, they're like, "Yo, we need, yo, know, give us some more work." You're like, "Man, I don't got shit to get." No, nah, when they came with the guns, yeah. it, was, it was past that. Okay, it was, it, I was damn near man. They hang up the phone on they goof ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now it's like, oh no, nah, man, you think we playing with you, shorty? Told you get my motherfucking money, like trying to see if they can see the fear in my ass. Now that I'm grown, I know what they was doing. So I'm just like, uh, and I'm a shorty, so I'm just like, damn, they caught, they caught me. I'm like, man, I ain't. So imagine, we got, I had a little security in the building, this and that. So they'd be on the little third floor out the window, the rifle and shit. So I, they get to walk, they walk me out the building, which my man look out. And they have guns pointed at you, they walk you yeah, out the building. They, one in my side, one in my back, you know what I'm saying, like w that. Like, where are they walking you to? Out to the uh, parking lot of the building, still take car. They was trying to take me that night. Oh, so, wait, so they're not even saying, yo, bring us to where you got nah, the work you stash. Come, you're coming with us. There ain't really no talking. It's oh, they on some come, Pablo Escobar shit. Yeah, we about to put you in the trunk. I'm just like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure out. I'm not even really totally understanding. Like, what are y'all about? Yeah, what y'all about to do? Because are I know. Are you panicking? Nope, because I know I had security in the building. What? Like, I, what, 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 look, what, what do you mean security now? Like, niggas, look, niggas looking out for me. They know I'm oh, in that okay, service. Like, so, oh, when you hear security, I'm nigga, thinking nigga, like, yo. Nigga in the window with the gun type oh, shit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All so right. So it's like, bam, I, or a nigga to let me know, like, police about to come. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, bam, I'm walking out the door. Now, I'm, I'm making noise. Like, damn, what the fuck? I'm trying to be loud. So now I, see, I already see the uh, I already see the little shade go up on the window. Are you scared to feel like Beyonce? Hell yeah, I'm terrified. So crying? Like, no, I'm not crying. No, 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 bro. It's, I'm a real gangster. It wasn't no crying. It, it's not a crying moment. It's a grown man moment. What I'm crying for, they already like, I'm, you know, I'm really trying to talk my way out this shit to, yeah, yeah. to see another day. So, so, so you be like, yo, what the fuck, yo, yo, yeah, chill, it's, yo. it's more like that. Like, what the fuck is y'all? Mm. Like, what the fuck is y'all on? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? Like, what, like, nigga, we could, like, this little shit, nigga, nigga, we could fix that whole. No, nah, nigga, fuck that shit. That shit over past, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that shit. Woo woo. Just being overly aggressive and shit. Like, trying to make, force me to, you know what I'm saying? Do some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, so my man, shout out to Will Kill. I did just tell him on Troy Eyes shit. You know what I'm saying? My nigga Will Kill, he out the window. He screamed out the thing. He say, man, he screamed my name. He say, Sean. That that instantly, it's in the middle of the night. So hey, motherfuckers like, so he, they look up. He, he, man, you good? Nah, man, you motherfucker out the window. They're, they got the gun to you. Yeah, they still got it on me, yeah. So, what do you say? I'm like, I tell my man, I'm like, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm, I, I'm all good. I don't know what niggas on. They put their guns down. Fam, got he got the van. He's over there. He about to knock their fucking heads off. So he, 
They put their guns up, and then he walks away. Well, it's the uh, Gregory Jones and uh, Anthony Glass. Gregory Jones is a nigga that was had the bitch around there. He had a homie that he just got out of jail and parole with from jail and brought him around here. So I always say, I don't have no remorse for them, really. But the, to what I tell people is, be careful who you be around with, because your friends will drag you to your death. Whoa, explain that. The nigga, didn't, the nigga didn't know nothing about around there. He didn't know nothing about me. Dude did. He brought, he's a nigga for me. I got a lick or something. Yeah, come over like on some tough shit and walk that man to his death. Now he, he got the gun on me. Now he a part of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. it's like. So, so, so now your man like is up somewhere and he, he says something. He said, yo, you good? You're like, man, I don't know what niggas is on. They see like, oh shit, okay. Yeah, so they. He got maybe a little back. They retreat. Let's, let's put the guns down. And uh, then they are, walk are, are they still walking you to the car no, or they, they coming back up? They kind of like, like you know, like, well, I'm I'm backing up back towards the building now. Like, I'm, I'm walking back towards my man. Yeah. Like, so he, they on some walk off shit, you know, they tugging their shit back. Like, all right. And they, I swear to God, on my on my daughter's so that man, uh, man turned around, looked at me and said, hey, tomorrow one of us going to be dead. Who says that? The, the guy who you know is bitch or, or? No, the nigga, the, yeah, the one who, who, who yeah, the Gregory Jones. Gonna so call basically him. he's promising that he finna come back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shit. So, you know, I was a little hard hit at is the time. He, are you feeling your stomach like just like dropping? Yeah, yeah, nuts, yeah. yeah. Nuts, yeah. Nuts, your, nuts raise in your stomach. You, you know, did a little reach, did you? Hell no. <laughs> ain't no time for none of that shit, bro. We talking about real shit. This ain't no little kid fight, you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like, what the fuck about to happen? So it's like, bam, now, now I ain't gonna lie, I'm young, so now I'm feeling like Superman once I see my man hanging, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I'm like, they goofy ass on with that dumb ass shit. So, like, man, they really so they hop in their car and leave? They gone. So I'm, I Why did you even go back to that building? I would've switched buildings up. Cause I'm still getting money. Like, they ain't, ain't no, I, was, I had the mentality, ain't nobody gonna stop my show. Okay, yeah, so man, can't it, stop the show, but, that's but, but, but that's this is the reason why in court, it proves like, that night I didn't have a weapon on me. I went to aggressor. The second night, since that happened to me, guess what I did? Protecting myself and put a gun on me. Oh, okay. So, so before we even get to the second night, that daytime, are you telling your friends like, "Yo, man, y'all know what happened"? Like, your niggas try to get up on me. Only, uh, I'm talking to my man. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling my man. I'm telling my. Um, I had a fiend in the building who crew used to run in. Donna, I don't know if she's still alive or not, but Donna, big Donna, held me down for years. I'm like, damn. I'm telling them, like, man, you know what happened? They're like, man, they like, man, them niggas better be they stupid. Like, they better not bring their dumb ass back down. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, but folks, that's as shocked as I am. So I'm just like, now the phone back ringing. That damn Are, blue phone, that motherfucking phone get the ringing. Do you keep thinking about what that nigga said the night before? Tomorrow somebody die. It's been a while. I can't. I, oh yeah, it's, it resonated with me. Like, holy, like this goof, like, like this nigga crazy. I'm like that. I mean, and they was like bloodshot red eyes. These is real killers. You know what I'm saying? I'll have to yeah. show you the paperwork and show you how they look. You, 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 you would be scared of them today. Like, man, what the fuck were they I'm even doing? About the story. I don't even need to see him. They was, they was some real gremlins. So you, you got a gun. What the hell you even get? Like, you, you just had a gun. I had a banger, right? So my homie, my homie Najee, rest in peace. Now he, uh, I went to Kentucky. He had a, a nice little, a, a 380 toy. I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, niggas be showing you to, like got yeah, some yeah. real shit. He tuck it up under the little in the uh, little stash around the bills and shit. So I know where it's at. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, motherfuckers know where it's at. We yeah. haven't needed, you know, motherfucker get into it, whatever. So he had went out to Kentucky before this happened, like maybe uh, a week or two, however long it was, and he got killed in the dice game up there. Mm. So as soon as motherfuckers heard that, motherfuckers, nah, I got it. You know what I'm saying? I, when that happened, I knew to go get that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so you go pick the gun up. Yeah. Be, and That's why I'm in the building gun. the next night. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. my nut, like, I was like, man, hey, man, I don't come back. So you have it on you or you stash it? I, I tape it to my arm. You because, tape it to your arm? Yeah, I got this scar right here. That's what this dud. When I do it, get out my arm, that shit cut me across my arm. But uh, I but like, a, you like duct tape? No, it's wintertime. It's wintertime, and I just got it in my coat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, just like that, bam. Over my sleeve, because you know, we have little police just come around now and they didn't want to get out the car, so we'd be in front of the building shit, and they'd just be like, lift your coat up. So they'd be like, and then you just be like, Oh, so the police would say lift your coat up so you keep, don't want to have it on your hip. No. So you got, oh, that, that's fucking clever. So bam, and that saved my life too, because check this out. So bam, so they back to second, let's they back to second. Now I'm in the building, dumb as hell, young, just thinking I'm just, you know, my man, I don't know, there ain't no security. <laughs> it's like, 
everything is just down. I'm trying to make a certain uh, quota this night. You know, I want to make 2,000 every night. I'm trying to make that. So there's no security this night? Nah. And it just happened. So on my mind, it's like, I ain't heard from they goof ass out. They already know. Like, I'm feeling like, oh, they know not to come the fuck down here type of shit. Yeah, because you would think that if they, if, if they came the first night, caught you lacking, the se- they're not going to catch you lacking yeah, the second nah, night. I'm so being they're agreed. not going to come. Yeah, I'm like, they not even coming back around this motherfucker. Yeah. It's goofy ass. Like, I, 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 to me, I thought I seen fear in their ass. Like, man, they ass. Get their ass on. But all the time, they just looking like, all right. And that man told me, like, tomorrow, one is going to be dead. So cool. Next night, bam. It's back like late night again, my dumb ass. I'm about to just go in the house, one of them moves. Like, yeah, let me go in the You crib. made some money that night? Yeah. I was I, I think I made like about twelve hundred. I was trying to get to two and it wasn't about to happen. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm just like, damn. I don't go in the crib. Shit. I'm just chilling. I am not knock on Donna though. She ain't even answer the door. Like then she went to sleep or something. Let me go to my walk over to the other building. My mama lived in the other building, so I'm about to walk over there. But right when I'm about to get ready to call it a day, bam, door swing open. <laughs> Car door. Yeah. No, nah, building door. Building door. Hey, back. I'm like, who the fuck? Because these I'm, people wearing masks or like they just hell no. But this is Chicago. Don't, don't believe in shysies. This is barefaced. These back in the day, they was just you know they you know. Oh shit! They want no shysty. Oh, basically like no, we don't need to wear no masks because fuck a witness. They ain't a witness. Yeah, we're gonna fuck. We got to you know, whatever they was planning on doing. Mm. Well, I know we know what they plan on doing now. But so bam, they come in the building. And it got me again. Now it's like, nah, this this it's, one I really get scared. The same two dudes. Same two niggas. Fuck. Same two guns. I say, fuck. But this time I don't see this time I only see the uh the nine. So I'm like, like, you know, the 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 the, the uh, passenger nigga, he done like nigga, what like, oh, you thought we was playing? I'm like, Danny about to I'm like this, like Danny about to shoot me right here. Now they just ripped my pockets off. They didn't took that little money out and this. And I'm like, remember, I was only 800. They took like, man, go with that little shit, man. Y'all, I'm tired sick of this shit. Hey, nah, sure, you coming with us. Fuck you think you've been playing with this and that. Let's go. So now I'm like this. Mind you, it was just like the police. They keep wanting to so, put you in a trunk. So What's like, up so with these things? They was trying, it was more to it. You know, I had a rich brother too. Okay. So it's like it's like bam. So I I throw my arms. Up. I was taller than them. Like if I if you was like to frisk me right now, I just throw my arms yeah. up and down on some on some. And now you moving fast because you halfway. They nerdy. frisked you. Yeah. But the gun is up here. Yes, and the big ass triple fat goose. Well, well, <laughs> well luckily that shit ain't, ain't fall down, right? No, nah, I got it in the coat. It was in the coat. Like yeah, it's, yeah. this is a triple fat goose, so it's yeah, yeah. padded and all that. So it ain't even touch me no way. So it's you like, need a sponsor right after that shit. Hey, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Triple fat goose. So bam, they pat him off of down. Boom, boom, boom. They man, come on, shorty, woo, woo. So he doing all they talking and this and that. Bam. Now I'm thinking like, what the fuck? They about throw me a turn on? Nigga, open the door. Big ass Lincoln uh, town car. Man, get in the back seat. Tough as hell. Now. I, I'm not thinking like no killing no gangsters then, so it's just like damn, getting the back seat. I'm, I'm still thinking I'm about to talk them out of it. They just took the little money. They probably just about to holler at me like, man, bro, I, you know, y'all just fucked me up. I gotta, get, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to still try to talk my way out the shit. Yeah, yeah. I ain't really, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, sh- nigga, get in the car. So the nigga to drive in there. Uh, so at least not in the trunk. You, you, you're not thinking like your life is flashing in front of you. You're still thinking it's a possibility. Yet. Not yet. I, 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 I can tell these things. Yo, you got it. Yo, I gave you. I'm not thinking they about to drive off with me. I, I, I'm not knowing what's going on. So when they get in the cop, bang. They take me way from a hundred, the hundreds, hundreds way to the west side. Now, I'm all on the express like, this whole time. Like, big and pleading. Like, what the fuck? Like, what y'all thinking? Like, man, matter of fact, you want to call your people, nigga, fuck that shit. Niggas want more than that, nigga. Sure, you got money, fuck is you doing? Who the fuck let you go over here do all this by yourself? Sure, you, 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 like, on some checking in shit. Like, on some, yeah. like, and I'm just like, man, y'all tripping because my people really that. You know what I'm saying? So, Are you thinking about this gun you still got on you? Uh, I know I got it on me. But, 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 I'm trying to plead with them for they lie. Like, like, oh, like, it's like you, you also say you only see one gun, though. Yeah, and it's on me, too. Now, remember this? Like, they died, they died clutching. So, so uh, having a gun on you means nothing when it's time, your time. So now, a nigga in the car like this on me. He done hopped in the, he like this. So he's not a driver? No, he's, he's a passenger. Yeah, yeah. He like this. He got it on me. And I was fat as hell. I was big, so it was like, throw his fat ass back then. Just, man, yeah, like, yeah, just, yeah, just keep pointing it at him. Man. So it was like, the whole time, now we done made it way to the west side. I'm like, man, we get off on this street called Costner. What are you saying to them like while you while you driving on the freeway? It was all type of shit. I, I'm like I'm like I'm just like, man, what y'all want? I, 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 like, are you looking at streets like like you know what I mean like the little highway signs to be like, yo? Yeah, I'm like, where we going? Like, like, what, like, what, like, what's the problem? Like, niggas, shut up, man. We about to ride. So we get off the block. So we get off the expressway. Any, any niggas in Chicago know on the west side. Know like out there, uh, what's that cost? And get off there, bust that right the, behind that gas station. It's just pitch black, dark alley, death. You know what I'm saying? Bodies getting dropped off. So it's like, damn, y'all. They're like, what the fuck street is this? So it's like, man, he didn't. Sh- 
turned. It's just industrial damn near. It's just like a bad block. And then I even turned the lights. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, man, what the fuck? I'm like, now, now, now is panic sweat. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, bro, like, let me out this fucking car. What y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? He, uh, then the niggas get to talking like, yeah, shorty. Like, motherfucker told you, gave you a warning, man. Fuck that shit. You know, your ass out of here type shit. You know what I'm saying? That type of talk. And he was trying to get to this alley over there where they motherfuckers was murdered. So now they're telling you they're about to kill you. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's that now. Are and you I'm believing still, it or are you still Hell yeah. It? And I'm okay. still telling them. I'm still trying to please. I'm not trying to kill these. I'm not a killer. Not yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I'm trying to tell their ass, hell no, let me go type shit. But You're like, yo, y'all got to just kick me out of the car right here. I'm good. Man, he let me go. Now, now, dude got me like this. So it's like, now it's like, it's a decision time. He's like, man, I'm in that alley right there. So now it's like. So they're picking where you're going to be dropped yeah. off as a corpse. Yes. So, oh, so the driver drive, he mean as hell. He, yeah, they like, man, shorty, man, I told you. I'm thinking they, they probably off the blow or something. They just zoned out zombies. He, this nigga like this. So he, he been Is like this. Is on the trigger? Yes. He been like this so long. It's like this now. Like, yeah, that alley right there. That was my second. That was my. God gave me. Oh, out. okay. So he got his hand. He's normally looking at you, but like, Mind you, I couldn't fidget in nothing. Dead. I couldn't even. You know what I'm saying? That, is your gonna, hand up, or are you? No, I'm, like, I'm like this. I'm trying huh. to see. I'm seeing how much leeway they really give me. I'm just like, my hands is free. He he, he feel comfortable because he got it on me like this. So, but then that fool starts basically keeping the gun pointed back there, but he looking over he there. Took now. That, yeah, he took Wait, that. Wait, this alley. He tried to look at that alley. You know what I'm saying? He took a look at that alley, like right there. And soon he said, right there. That's why I got cut. I ripped that motherfucker out so fast. It happened so fast, like like two seconds, and they got you know, bah, five times. Bah, 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 bah. He got the passenger hit five times with the gun still like this. Wait, wait, hold on. Did you know there was a bullet in the chamber? Yeah. Damn, good. I mean, yeah. I mean, we were not stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, out there with that bitch cocked and loaded. Why would you have it on you? You ain't ready. You should. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. So, you know hey, listen I'm, I'm all for the Second Amendment, right? And I know a lot of some people don't like carried with the the joint. You know what I mean? Bro. <laughs> okay. So you 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 pull it five times to that dude and take his head off because there's uh, black talons in the um in the in the gun. The bullets was black talons. They like explode on impact. So that, that fucked his whole shit off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, it's seconds. It ain't no, oh, boom, boom, boom. And it, it was boom, boom, boom. And that nigga died, like, the driver died like this, trying to reach back. And um, and I called him right down, slammed him up three times, bam, bam, bam. All behind the temples and shit. My shit in the law library because it's one of the cases in Illinois that uh, I begat, I beat a self-defense even though I shot him behind the temple. Oh. Uh. Because you really can't plead self-defense if you shoot somebody behind the temple. It's a blind spot. Yeah, okay, okay. So he, the guy is driving though. Does the car crash? Yeah, it's a Greystone and, and it smash. It's a Lincoln Town car, like a, uh, one of them long motherfuckers. And uh, it, it crashed it's on Jackson and whatever that street was off Costner. And it was a brownstone. And that car had no match for that brownstone. And that car folded all the way to my knees in the back seat. Are you checking to see if they're dead? Or you don't Bro, give a fuck. You just want to make sure they're not. It was a gory scene. What do you mean? Gory. Heads missing, decapitations, all type of shit. So you're seen inside their skull. I'm in the car. When he's all blood, blood. Like zone. I told Troy, uh, uh, I say I roll with a dead man. Well, Rigor Morris kicked in because when I shot the driver and shit, he, uh, you know, his uh, Rigor Morris. If you don't know what that is, it kicked in. It's like your last breath. And when it kicked in, his body stood all the way up stiff, and his head was like at the top of the car. And, his foot hit the gas, and it was just like, and I'm trying, I'm damn to reach it for the dough. It was over with. Damn. Now, mind you what I said. If the car smashed from the fucking hood to the backseat of my knees, where are these bodies at? They're basically up against you in the seat. They shredded. Really? So, real quick, that's not to go past it, but in my trial, the states tried to, uh, Gross the uh, juror out by putting big ass teletron pictures of the dead bodies, which was like, and it was so it was so vicious. I had a mean judge, and when they did it, soon they like tried to like roll it out. The judge said, "Get that shit out of here! Get that out of here! We don't need to see. Nobody needs to see that." Like people was disgusted, like, "Oh my god!" Because it was like none of this matter. They, they tried to do that in the Wine W Melly case too by by saying, "Hey." Let's bring the jurors to go see how bloody the car were. It, it, it's, it's a cause see, of the impact. Lawyer, yo, that's on your lawyer. To, you got to fight this type of shit. Okay. okay. All right. So, cool. So, it crashes. 
you, I guess you kind of realize they're fucked up. They're dead. Man, my shoe was missing. My gun was missing. So the gun my falls out your head. So I'm bleeding. I'm hurt. You're discombobulated because it's a fucking. I'm, fu- I'm knocked. Yeah, I come to. Uh, shout out to them niggas out west back then. It was a nigga in the, uh, like one of Teal Green Apollos, like the 96 Apollos. And he was driving down the street. It was like at what, one in the morning. It was late as hell. So it was like the only car driving down the street. And he stopped. He thought he said, witness an accident. And I, I'm, I'm getting out the car. And him, he ain't in the car with a girl. He hopped out in the middle of the street. He said, man, damn, he looking like, damn, that's a fucked up accident. And I'm getting out. He said, man, shorty, you good? He said, what the fuck? He looked at the car. He said, them, them, them people dead. What the fuck? I say, man, I'm from the South Side. I just got kidnapped, bro. And he said, what? Man, get in my car. And I thought he was going to take me to the police station. No, he drove me all the way home. Wait, so you went home that night? Mm-hmm. Oh, hell no. I nigga, I would have been in the precinct. No, I was bloody. I was nervous. I'm just like, bam. You didn't go to the hospital at all? Nothing. I ain't tell no. I, ain't, I went right in my mama's crib. Went right in there, laid down, got in the shower. I was, I was in shock. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck, what the fuck? Is that why... You probably got charged because if you, I got charged for a couple things because the drugs involved with the case. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Did, did they find? Oh, was it drugs not in the so car? much leaving the scene of the crime, legal weapon. You know what I'm saying. The weapon got the gun. The first thing got tossed out doing a motion. You know what I'm saying? Because why did they throw it out? It, they it wasn't the state didn't want to fight it. They okay. went straight for you know in the murder trial, you can go for uh you no know, do like you see they can go for different ways to convict you. They went for capital murder, death penalty. They didn't go for a lesser charge like a first degree murder or second degree. Does capital murder in Illinois come with, um, so it comes death with death penalty? penalty. Yeah, or natural oh, Wow, life. you could have been on death row. Yeah. Okay, so, all right. Let's even go to the steps of even you talk, even the cops getting involved. You go home, do you say, Mama, niggas just kidnapped me? I had to smoke two niggas tonight. I don't say nothing. You just hop in the shower. Hop in the shower and lay it down. Then I, I was so nervous. Were you my, even, did you even able to sleep? No, nah, my nerves just jumping and just fidgety. To I'm just waiting on the sun to come up. Just I get up because now I'm nervous. I'm like, what's about to? You know what I'm saying? Let me go. I just I, for some told me to walk to a little corner store, which I had to walk past they building where, the, where his girl lives. So I walked past that. Damn, I done went in the store. I done came out. I'm limping, man. I'm limping. You can see it. Like damn, something hurt. You know, my you have another gun on you because who knows? Like you just walk it. Well, just so I know my threat is eliminated, so I'm just, okay. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They've been so, neutralized. Yeah, I'm just, oh, I'm man. walking, just trying to really just nervous, you know what I'm saying? And then that's when my nerves, boom, I see the blue uh, Crown Vic. I said, damn, I'm trying to walk out. They turned around. They, they already knew they it. Me, they, and it, my name, Vershawn, they call me Sean, because people call me Sean. They say, Sean. I try to store them. They, hey, now, come on, check it out. Come here. And then that was the, take me to the police station. My uncle and them saying the lawyer, you know, my lawyer, chief judge in Chicago right now. He 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 was a political back then. You know, he was an FBI agent for like 20 years prior to being a defense attorney. All type. So he he was vicious. Tommy Brewer, you know, shout out to Tommy Brewer. Got my life back. But bam, so lawyer come, bam, police station. You know, tell him what happened. He, man, I got to go in there and tell the police what happened. Like, shit, this is just what happened. They, they, they got a gun. They got to shoot. They got physical evidence. You know what I'm saying? That I was there. So ain't no, I wasn't there. Well, let me be quiet because, you know, my lawyer advised me, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to write, you're going to have to give a statement of exactly what happened. And you're going to lay it on down there. You're going to have to say that same story. Say, yo, to, you know what I'm saying? To get out this shit. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell your story. It's self-defense. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to have to go through the motions. Either uh, uh, First, I was thinking about a bench trial for a long time because it was kind of, to my lawyers, like it's clear-cut self-defense, but not so much in the court of law because the drugs involved, there's other things involved. Um, when they did, how they even knew it was me involved because before the friend, friends, all that shit, because uh, the girlfriend, when they come with the pictures of them dead in the car all fucked up this and that, this helped me in my case too. First thing she said was, she, they said, do you know who these people are? Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the body's all fucked up, bloated, it's, it's fucked up. So the bodies, the heads, remember, decapitated, one of them, this and that. But the body was so swell, what did she say? Oh, that's that boy Sean down there that's selling drugs. They like, and the, they, the police, the police tell me that's doing the uh, thing. They like, what is, I see, they, they thought it was kind of awkward. They like, why was you, why do you think it's him? Like, why? He's like, yeah, he's the big guy. You see that? They say, no, this is your boyfriend. And they were skinny. Like, they, they was like his size. Matter of fact, it was like, he was like. So the, the bodies were. were they were, swelled bigger than you. It, it was really? his size. They swelled 10 times bigger than you. So, really? so man, so they like, no, this is him and this is him. And you know what I'm saying? Woo, woo. So who is this, who is this Sean nigga you talking about now? Oh. 
Well, they was talking about something with Sean, owed them something, and they was going to get it tonight, and I don't know what happened. Uh, oh, so you just admit it. They, they was coming to see me type Yeah, yeah, you know and I helped saying? you. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So, so bam. All right, bam, they, come, they got me now, so now they got my statement of exactly what I just told you. <laughs> exactly what I'm about, you know what I'm saying? yeah, yeah. So it's like, bam, all right, now it's like. Do you get bail or do you have to sit down? Bam, my bail is a million dollars. So, bam, so my bail is a million dollars. My people have bread, properties, and all that. Now, I had, a, I had an expert lawyer, though. And the first thing he said is, you're not going to bond a 17, 18, well, 18-year-old out of jail for 100000 cash on a double capital murder drug case. Where did this money come from? Like, who got it like that? My grandma didn't have no 100 you know what I'm saying? Imagine we had that that money that was yeah, yeah. in ninety three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh this this uh late ninety eight, ninety, you know what I'm saying, going into ninety eight, ninety nine. That money, you know what I'm saying, it ain't just all hundred still land. Like, you know, my husband brought houses, all type of shit, you know, some fam- family money. This ain't no hustle money, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I right, my lawyer wanted sixty bands, bond a hundred. And he said, you know what? This was his strategy. I hated it though, of course, because I had to go through it, but you know, I'm in it, so this is what I had to man up. And he told me, and I thought he was being like a greedy ass. So he's like, listen, I'm going to have your family pay me the 60000 and you're going to sit here for about 18 months to two years. What? It's a long time. How you think I felt when he said it? I just got here. Like, huh? He said, because this shit here, he's like, it's, he like man, he like, they, they calling it a capital uh, drug murder. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, fuck, like, what to do? So it's like, my uncle and them, you know, I looked up to them, so it's like, man, whatever this man say, you know what I'm saying, just shut your ass up and do whatever he said, you know what I'm saying, just, you know, man, all right, cool. And I got to sit, but my lawyer paid. So to some niggas, it's like, you rather be bonded out, still fighting this, how that escapes, or have a professional attorney on top of this shit, you know what I'm saying, with a chance to be home, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, I'll nah, take care of him. I'm good. I go to the store good. Life in jail went hard for me. I'm chilling, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was on the school. I was on the gladiator wing in Division 11 uh, back in that day. Division 11 AB. Shots so out, man. I was on there with some niggas, legendary cases and shit. And, uh, some of the shorties on there for killing the police, which they didn't do, but got 60 years for it, all that type of shit. Well, like, a lot of little legendary little young niggas was on my deck. You know what I'm saying? So, my jail stay was straight, you know what I'm saying? Of course, nobody wanted to be in jail, so it was like, it was fucked up, but at the same time, it wasn't. Did it take two years to go to trial? 18 months I was home. 18 months. Yeah. So w- w- when you get to trial, like how nervous are you? Like I was you, nervous you, you every day. I was nervous. I was nervous all the way till I made it home and got in the shower and knew I was home. Mm. Yeah. My dad trial, I, I didn't shit it on myself in the bullpen. My stomach was just, it was just, it was just, I, I, I never experienced it. So it was just like super nervous. Like what the fuck? Any niggas know, boy, I, down, down, I threw the tunnel in the, in the bull pins. I had to take a shit. One of them nads, like, damn it, like, you're going to die from infection. It's like, so you just, I couldn't help it. I had to use the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? It's like, fucked up. And I'm in trial. Like, this is my first day of trial. I'm nervous as fuck. First day of trial, act, they come at me like this. We're getting 60 years on a cop out right now. That's what the prosecutor comes Yeah, in. then they actually let me go. 60 on, years. They actually, yeah, remember, I fight. I'm not true life. You know what I'm saying? But they was going to put me at 60, at 50. So I did thirty, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I told my lawyer, I ain't doing a, I ain't doing shit. And he like, that's what I want to hear. But remember, a lawyer can't, he cannot tell you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, can't tell you, know you what, what to, to, to He pay. just gotta ask, like, you know, this is what they offer. So he's like, let me let uh, your cousin, my first cousin, and shit. He like, let me let him in so he could talk to you. So he nervous. They not know his family. Like, man, you got, you, you gonna take the time, you know, so at least you can come home one day. And you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, what? I probably just be coming home like three years from now, type shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I'm like, hell no. Like, like I'm just, I've been here this long. My faith with God, I'm riding it out. And I know I ain't do no wrong. I protected my life. I'll do it again. That's how I feel. And if if I did something wrong, if I got to go, then I'm going to go because I'm not going to let nobody kill me. Like, hell no. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was my full two conference I had with my lawyer, you know what I'm saying, to the sidebar. Came back out. Lawyer told the judge, no, nah, we ain't taking no deals. So let's begin trial. No, my my lawyer name was I mean my judge name was Scary Alone. His name was Joseph G. Cass Mersky. And they used to call his nickname was No Mercy Cass Mercy. Oh shit. He gave out football numbers, three digit numbers. Just ignorant shit. Like hundred years. Ninety nine, like you're like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. 
<laughs> and I'm just like, man, but mind you, my attorney is different. He had black man, he like a Johnny Cocker back then. And he was running for Cook County Sheriff. He's like super political. And he was a federal agent. He was on their side, basically. State's attorney and all that way before he got his own defense uh, attorney. Uh, what, what, what starts to happen during the trial that gives you either hope that you're going to come home or that probably <sighs> swayed the jury? What was happening? My jury selection. So juries, you, you know, you know, like, you know, I've been covering a lot of these like cases in hip hop and people, even the YNW Melly case, they mm -hmm. say that case, the first case, at least in the mistrial, they said that was all jury selection. They mm -hmm. say you got, they say you, fuck, yeah, fuck they, the they, trial, you got to pick they, right they, Yeah, they couldn't decide. So check this out. So bam, I got, uh, I'll never forget this. I got seven black mother figures. I'm only talking how the lawyer talked to me. I got seven black mother figures on, the, on my jury. That alone. I'm I'm a shorty. Look look what happened. You know what I'm saying? That's like that could have happened to your kid. Ain't no way these ladies ain't about to see you. They from the south side of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? They ain't about they they know what's going on. Like these old niggas thought they you know, they was gonna pressure him to do that. Like, nope. Like, even though he was doing something bad, that don't mean take his life. You know what I'm saying? You can defend your life. So I had that to advantage. I only had one white man. Fuck him. I'm gonna tell you about him in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Like an Asian and some little sprinkles of other races, but the white people fucked them. I mean, fuck dude, white ass, you know. Wow. Yeah, hella white people. Because he held it like, okay, bam, this on a Monday. My trial lasts from Monday to Wednesday. So on a Monday, bam. I could have beat my case on. Well, I took the stand Tuesday. Oh, so you did take the stand? Hell yes. 18 years old. I stood up there and had to, that's what I'm telling you. I had to just keep repeating this shit. Hey, you let know me ask you a question, personal question, and you know, I, now that you've been through it. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it's important in a self defense case that you you speak for yourself? Yes. Mm. What's better than coming out your mouth? It's sincere. It's it's you can judge what I'm saying. Not my lawyer. This professional, and you just like okay, the professional knows, and but she might feel like she might be looking at me like this asshole did it, but then I get to talking, and I'm just a kid. She's like, well, he could be with my nephew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like no, they what? Well, they did this. Oh, look at their record. Then that was another thing. They records too. They was 37 and 38. I was uh, 18 by the time I went to trial. They records was longer than my life. Mm, they've been in For all violent jail. crimes, all type of shit. They had just got out of jail. Mm. They weren't supposed to have guns. They died with guns on their, in their hands and shit. Let me ask you a question. Because you know sometimes when they when these situations happen, they'll try to throw out their criminal record in a sense. Oh, they tried. Like, the state the state tried everything they did. I had a mass of an attorney. Think what this man, what I'm telling you this man did. He was an FBI agent for 20 years of his career. Mm. He was a state's attorney for maybe four. Then he got his own law firm. He ran for Cook County Sheriff. That means to run the, old, the whole county. He lost that to Michael Shanahan, you know, the white man that ran in and shit. But he stayed, he was political. So Joseph G. Cass Mercy was no, had no mercy for us, for us niggas, but he might go golf with Tommy. But mm. well, Tommy tell me, hey man, go to sleep, man. I'm going to golf with your judge in the morning. You know what's so funny? I've heard that too about the legal process where they're like, hey, listen, <laughs> the best lawyers are best friends with the prosecutors and a the judge. They, you know worked, I mean? they work together all day. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 like, 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 listen, they argue it out and they'd be like, like, they, they'll still be like, hey, how was that? How was that 20 year anniversary party? You know what I mean? Like, they, they, you can see that there's a rapport. There's a I'm going to tell you the coldest shit in the world my lawyer told me because he was a smooth nigga, though, because he was niggerish with me because he know I'm from some street. I use a street nigga. So he it's like a like the fair man. Like, yeah, nigga, you gonna have to. You know what I'm saying? Then he in the courtroom, he was liking the little clerk lady, the little black clerk lady. That nigga told me the raw shit would I be my case. You know what I'm saying? Not to skip it, but he was just like, yeah, now tell your family to send me six more thousand dollars. I'm gonna take this motherfucker on a vacation. <laughs> really? <laughs> the clerk house dad left, like, damn. And the nigga called me like three days of being out here. They got that together yet? Oh, he, he bought I that love shit. Tommy Brewer. Now he bought that shit. He got that shit. Okay, cool. You take the stand. You're fucking. You're feeling your heart. Your chest is beating. I well, let's say well, a couple people took the stand. No, mind you. Okay, let, let's let's not skip over nothing. It was a BD that lived in the building over my mom on the third floor. I'm on the second floor. The FBI came and got him for whatever reason, and he tried to, I guess, throw shit off on me. They took him. I got this all in my paperwork. They took him to Evergreen Plaza. This is how long this was. People in Chicago like that. They took him to Evergreen Plaza to the Lark and brought him a Pelly and an outfit. So that's about two thousand dollars for him to come and testify on my uh, murder trial. You know what I'm saying? So he said, you know what I'm saying? But what we was getting was he came to them type shit. You know what I'm saying? So bam, now he here he go out of nowhere. This is seven eight months down the line of me fighting. 
Now here a witness. I think nigga wasn't no witness. Dead men don't talk. You know, they just leave whatever they left. But like it wasn't no like I'm thinking it's that you know what I was thinking? I was thinking like it must be the dude that picked me up in that car. That's that yeah. nigga. Like, what can he say though? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, what is he with? He just gonna say he, I'm telling my lawyer, like, there ain't nobody like you sure there's nobody already? like hell no. So bam. Some mysterious shit pop. I tell my lawyer, like, man, this hating ass hoe ass nigga. He wanted what I had in them buildings. As long as I was over there, you ain't eating over here, nigga. So yeah. when I'm gone, now he the man over there. You know what I'm saying? All the way till I got out of jail. So I'm like, damn. So that was crazy. That was a curve in my case because they, they really couldn't find nothing. What did he get up on, on the state of the city? He didn't get he didn't make it though. So, oh, so, so he was on so, the witness list, but he never made it. He's on the, the witness list. He was a special witness. Cause they had the girl, uh she the uh girlfriend. The what girlfriend wind nice. up helping me out, basically. You know what I'm saying? She probably don't even know. It's stupid. Yeah, she, she fucked up. She was crying on stand because she knew they, they, it was one of them. Like, well, the states was like, get her. Like, yeah, get no, more, no more questions for her. <laughs> <laughs> she, worked, she worked for the dirt. Because first of all, she was a drug addict that worked for the fucking federal building downtown. She lost her job, all type of shit. Lady, get out of here. Yeah, You're embarrassing your, the state. Get your ass one out of here. <laughs> get your ass. You did well. Y'all got kids and all some drugs. You on cocaine. And he's been selling the drugs to you. And you the one that introduced them. And you know what I'm saying? So yeah, all bad, all bad for her. They had a uh, impact witness, uh, his mom, old lady. Now I, I knew these niggas. They was pure D dope fiend. Stick up by they. I didn't think they had a mama. All of a sudden, some old lady, and it's and it's not funny or nothing like that because I'm not mocking the dead or nothing like that. I'm not one of them. But that old lady he had on the stage. Oh, you gotta have a Gucci man approach, man. Nah, you that, put them niggas where they deserve to be. I mean, you know, of course. I mean, they, they you <laughs> know, know once, what's understood, I need to be explained. Right? But you know what I'm saying? So the old lady get on the stand and say some shit like, uh, I damn near laugh too. I was young. He, he, he gonna say, yeah. I'm just going to miss him because, you know, he used to come by every morning and, and fix my coffee and we'll have a cup of coffee and have a talk. I said, this dope, this motherfucker. I told my lawyer dug so deep into that old lady. Like, my lawyer was, it's hard. I had a heartless lawyer. Like, yeah. I, lady, this lady, what coffee? What what brand would you drink every morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know. And was it warm? Was it cold? Like, just, just really, just fuck this yeah, yeah, old lady yeah. off to it. It's like, get her off the stage. Yeah, get her ass off the stage. Yeah, I had one. This bitch don't even drink coffee. Yeah, like, who talk, coffee what coffee, 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 coffee? Like, what coffee brand did he used to bring you? Uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, lawyers are slick. If they can get you keep being inconsistent with shit, it's like, you, you you're, you're incredible now. Yeah, you don't yeah. even know what fucking kind of coffee that you missing having every morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So, bad. You no, know, that was up. But then my my witness came on the security from that first night. Oh, okay, okay. Will Kill come for me and say, yeah, I witnessed them walking out of the building with guns to them we out the first night. It was a, a revolver and a nine millimeter. Why is that important? Because they died with these certain guns. Oh, describe them. Oh, have you seen the guns that they had, Will? Describe them. Uh, one of them had the barrel, this and that. One of them looked like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, No other questions. Damn. That's a man's the idea. State, the state, yeah, I love him to death. You know that. He's with me for the rest of my life. Uh, the state, like, they they tried to fight, but they tried to they tried to hit a home run because Tommy Brewer was a big name. So yeah. it's like, nah, we ain't going for nothing small. We ain't settling. We knocking this bitch out the park. Is it a thing where, like, maybe during the case, they're like, yo, listen, this ain't going too good for us. We brought this girl. She's an idiot. We brought the mom. We already the in trial. It's over with for that shit. Oh, so they can't come back and be like, they, I are, they offered me the 60. Time. Remember the day, the yeah. first day? Uh-uh. We're going to, we're trying to go to trial. Mm. I'm prepared. Okay. So now you take the stand. Mm hmm And I get them word for word. What I told them in the police station. From what I told them on the stand. So I'll tell you that. Do you have to rehearse this with your, with your lawyer before you get on? Of course. On? Okay, because you got to make sure you say it right. Uh, yeah, he ain't about to just put you up there and freestyle with your life, right. nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, I'm just going to freestyle with my life. It's like, it's like he, what it was. Are you in tears when you're, you're up there saying Hell it? Hell no. But you know what? No, because uh, by then, you remember, want to be emotional. No, remember, I was a fat boy. I've been in jail a little bit now. Now I look aggressive. Now, now it's like I'm a little cutting out my chest. Now I'm like this damn near. So now it's like, oh, I don't know about them kids. Now he's like, he could have fucked them up, like type shit. Yeah. So he had to paint the picture, taking it back. Now he was this fat little kid. They just bullying around. They thought they could just do anything to him. And he was just going to fold. Oh, he painted that picture. Yeah. Then he had to show the old pictures of me fat. And you know what I'm saying? So in, in a court of law, not to say this, but a fat person would be looked at as softer than a, a, a mother. Like if you was just, they, they, they'll choose him to be the aggressor over you. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, yeah. Not no in shape, big nigga, but a fat nigga in this and that. Like, oh, no, nah, he's a big dough boy. Yeah, This shit yeah. real. You know what I'm saying? These niggas are real villains. You know what I'm saying? So. So, it's, okay, good. So, you, you, you take this in, 
And um, it, it probably get to closing arguments. The verdict's about to be read. When you when you walk in that day, when you hear announcement or they give you shout out notice. to uh, this nigga Mark Clark. I think he was over the, uh, with the BDs and all that, but he had a federal case. He was back on a writ, and Tommy Ritt, Brewer was his lawyer at the time, and he was like a legend in Chicago. This and that, and he was in that bullpen with me, and he uh, prayed with me, and he told me he like you about to beat this shit. Like, don't even worry about it. My stomach just kept bubbling. It's went like, now I'm in a, I'm in deliberation. Closing the arguments. Now we're in deliberation. Are, are, are you making eye contact with the jurors and shit like that? Like, yes. You're I hoping, like, yo, come on, give me a chance. Like, I, like, 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 see, I'm not a bad I person. Had seven black mother figures. Tommy Brewer landed up where they was right at the front row. Yeah. The audience, this is all you see is these ladies and mm mm. And, Mm, like when they get to yeah, doing, yeah. I, I'm feeling better about every. Mm, mm, like, oh, oh, they, they, oh, oh, they have an emotion. Yeah, because it's like, man, they really like. You know what I'm saying? This little boy really did. Like, you know what I'm saying? They showing him the rigor mortis. They 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 showing him the um the autopsies. They showing you know they doctors talking all type of shit going on. You know what I'm saying? They just like what the fuck. So bam, now we in deliberation. Deliberation is waiting to see what the jury say. I say let's just say it's three three p.m. Now it's seven to eight p.m. My lawyer came back and forth. I'm just. Damn this shit are, you on eating, are you eating at this time? I ain't just, eating. I can't do nothing. My mouth is just, just yeah. I done talked, I done gave it up my all, you know what I'm saying? I done, I done, I done focused, I done, you know, I was passionate. I was, I was, you know, I, I was just telling the truth. So it wasn't hard for me to do. That's what my lawyer saying. Like, it ain't like the truth is never hard to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, just keep telling what happened. So it's like, all right, this is what happened. So now the black, the black drawers and the uh, even I think I like, met like some Latinos and stuff, they all was this one prick dickhead white boy. Kept trying to think, you know, some of them drawers feel like they're law and order. Like, they really take that shit to the heart type shit. Yeah. So it's like, well, uh, he was going back and forth, 11 against one. So when they came back, J Joseph G, he could have been uh, mistrial and all that. He Get the fuck back in there. These just gangster judges. Mm. This ain't no, oh, they talking like this. This this is behind the scenes. Get the fuck back in there. What the fuck they mean, 11 to one? What, 11, man? Get so it's like... Tommy Brewer come tell me it's 11 to 1, but don't celebrate because this motherfucking white man is so stubborn. He's talking about by law, you killed the dude with the gun in his hand facing you, cool, but you could have spared his life. You could have took total control because you got the gun. So you could have spared his, you could have spared a life and you didn't. That's some MacGyver type nigga. I'm like, man, who in the fuck? You know how we got, you know how they convinced him? Huh? Like they just they just broke it down to him. The night we, we had to go back in and everything. The night before, the first night, what was seen? It was seen that they, them niggas had guns on you, both of them. Two guns. Two guns. The night they died, they, they, they got one gun. They had one gun. So in uh, a logical mind, what you thinking? If, I, if we pull back up on you like that, what, what are you thinking? I think both of them got a gun. So he finally, so it took like seven hours. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess, you know, it was kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Or some, yeah, and the black yeah, mamas yeah. was rubbing, they ordered some Popeyes. And yeah. They, and I mean, the lady, the, one of the ladies, uh, like, met my mama outside the county, was hugging a friend with her and told her, like, we weren't about to let them do that to your baby and this and that. And this is a shame, like, had a real talk with her and told us how that white man was doing. And, like, they finally broke through to him. Yeah. Like, they was back there talking to him and, and explaining to him how it is on the south side of Chicago and this and that. He was, like, from, a, a, like, a northern suburb, and he was just, like, by law, and he's showing them the law of a... a oh, he's a, a black a, and white guy. Yeah, he's showing them the law of a, a involuntary manslaughter. Bro, they charged me for a first degree. We got to go by the guidelines. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, so he... You wanted, can't go. You, they can't he, cop out. The state can't cop out. Like, well, no, 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 no. Let's just make it a uh, manslaughter die. Yeah. No, it's a capital double murder. Y'all got to... Yeah, that, that wasn't... Even on the bill when, when yeah, they got to match everything right that matches the capital murder and it don't you know what yeah. I'm saying so he finally thank God for him too though because I wouldn't be a, you know what I'm saying so you know he he, he folded they said he finally got it was a big black uh, mama you know what I'm saying yeah. and she was kind of the, like the head drew or something yeah, she, the, the, the foreman yeah and she said she got him to come around and she said you know she understood where he was coming from because he taught them something about the law and if I would have took the, took a bench trial, then yeah, the uh, Joseph G told me like if you took a bench trial, he like he like the jury had a point. He like I'd have found you not guilty on um, all charges on the one who doubted the gunner's head, and I'd have probably gave you involuntary manslaughter or second degree, and it would have been a twenty to forty or some shit like that. And wow. I'm just like thank God, I thank God. No, he actually told me like thank God you took a jury. He said you better thank this man Tommy Brewer. 
I ever see you come back through these counties or something with something like this again, I'm going to make sure you never, ever see the light of day ever again in your life. Have a good life. When, when they read the verdict, are you emotional? I was, uh, I was overwhelmed. It never was a tell. I was just, uh, no, I was just like, by then, I'm just yeah. a super, I'm just, I'm, 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 are you in disbelief a little bit? I was like a monster. So it's like, I, I'm just like, I don't believe it. It's like, I've been in these walls so long to me, you know what I'm saying? A little year and a half to me was just a tell, like forever. But I'm like, bam, I hit the deck back. I tell my celly, man, I beat that shit. They, everybody celebrating on the deck. Shine song had just came out there. So that was playing on the TV, you know, they be having to, yeah. uh, so I'm like, damn, that's the new shit out. Like, look at the beans. I'm just like, damn, let's get up outside. I was excited, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's taking them too long to come get me off the deck. Now they didn't gave it, got me. Everybody happy for me. It's like it's like family in jail down the camp. I know all like, they hugging me, uh, officer camp hugging me. Like, man, I know you was gonna make it home, man. Just do right in life, man. Just yeah. you know, go do something, man. Like them niggas was bums, man. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't throw your life away. Fuck them, nigga. Like that, my whole bit was like that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I think you going home. You know is it saying? normally like that in jail where like people know each other's cases like like at least what's kind of going on especially if you're going to trial the guards knew my cases I wasn't talking to the inmates about my shit too much they just know I was in there for a double murder mm. so a lot of them felt like boy sure you gonna boy you gotta do a honey when I first hit the bullpen when I first got locked up and made the county bullpen man they heard my case through the through the through the uh, you know while they listening in the bullpen while I'm in court Old man in there be like, boy, you might as well go on take pack it on unpack you gonna be here for the long ride and all that shit. And I'm just looking at these people because my lawyer already was preparing me and shit. Like, man, when you go in there, I got a gangster. They're like, man, don't talk to none of their ass. Don't talk to nobody about your case. Don't talk about that shit over the phone. None of that shit. Don't discuss it with no nobody. Why not? So, because a motherfucker in jail that's trying to get out of trouble might use something against you that you just said and go to court. I'm like, well, dude, they got the double murder that just said he woo woo woo. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Fuck my case up. So I, I eliminated that risk. Jeez. So you, you, so you, you finally come home. Man. Happy, like, thanking God. Uh, I read the Bible about three, four times while I was in there front to back. I was like, I guess it was a time God wanted to catch me before I, I, I was just too vicious on some thinking I'm a killer and this and that. So it's like, man, thank God. But then I still came home and became big folks. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's where I got my name from, jail. So it's like, damn, now I'm this nigga. Now it's like, and I'm from Chicago. It's like, now it's just, just like, oh, that's shorty. But body them niggas. Now, now I'm a killer. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so people's perception of yeah. you that was like you're a killer, yeah, but, nah, I'm a but killer. You, you, you're not coming out to be on some. Mm -mm. Let me live up to some reputation type shit. Hell no, nah, but I, I didn't went to jail. I got other neighborhoods. I, you know, what I'm saying I was already selling drugs. It's like now I got more room to do something. Now I'm plugged with my little celly for two years. My nigga Frog, man. He, hope he got. He had 36 years. He should be trying to come home in a few years. He he tell me, look, go like all that shit you got going on. Go over there with my brother. And then when you go home, man, you got plugs and shit already. As a, like, man, go over there with them. And I so went back my, to selling drugs. Yeah. When did you give that up, though? You said oh, when the, Probably, the uh, thing, right when I got mouse. Mm. Probably right around when I got mouse because we have D lines and mouse and them was you know what I'm saying. Top so, shot and them running them bitches. So, so so how how do you watch over the years after you get out Chicago change mm. because now you know you've been through your trials and tribulations yeah you did your thing you were selling whatever. Mm. But then you also see Chicago start drastically changing. Then you see other motherfuckers, including people like me, start having an interest in what's going on in Chicago. Like, I think one of the, the things that people don't realize that about those, and this, I always said it's about covering the war in Chirac. Mm. What I didn't understand was that what I was looking at and I was covering, man, these were like, a lot of them were kids going through for the first time, not even understanding the eyes looking at them. All like right, yeah. they, they, they're just going through, like they're just living life. They're like just you know being what I mean? them. Now the cameras that's on. That's yeah, all exactly. Now and, the and, and I don't think sometimes I had grace for that. Mm. I was just on some shit. Like, well, I grew up different, and my circumstances was like you. So, nigga, why the fuck is you doing all that bad shit? Nigga, do better. You know what I mean? And and, and that's easy to say yeah. when you're not there in that environment. Yeah. Um. What did you kind of see as you you just got out of a situation where, man, you beat the impossible, but also you're seeing society and things keep going a certain way, though? It was almost like, shit, shit keep moving, shit, every, nothing stops. Like, everything's still a day and it's the same, everything's still rocking and rolling, like, what you gonna do? 
Like I, I, not, not only did I not go to high school, now I ain't went to jail. Now it was like my lawyer had plugged me with a hotel job when I first got home. Shit, yeah, that you? shit went. Yeah, he's like he put me right out there, like by uh, uh by the airport, by out here airport and shit. His uh police friend was the manager at this hotel, so he was gonna make me the night auditor. They gave me a real job. I don't know. <laughs> But that shit is like, man, my friend who told me to go see his brother, them niggas making like 10 bucks a day type shit. You know what I'm saying? On the coke. <laughs> so it's just like, uh, so now I'm dabbling in that and I'm trying to go to work. So that just surpassed that. It's like, man, I don't got time for that shit no more. I ain't going. Like, Officer Ricky from out there, shit, he was real cool. Mexican Latin nigga, he was like the captain of the police out there in uh, Bowel Air Airport and shit. I just saw Ricky, like, I ain't coming back here, man. I don't keep wasting your time. He like, well, Mr. Brewer's gonna be awfully upset to know you're not coming back. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to get a new job and just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, it's too far. I'm all the way outside. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 so you, you then start going even outside of like Chicago, mm -hmm. right? Um, just hustling. Yeah. Minnesota, Wisconsin, but uh, Wisconsin? Not, not, yeah, Appleton, Wisconsin, up there by Green Bay. Um, but nothing in this world where I was hustling beat uh, Washington, Pennsylvania. Mm. I had I had I had a total of uh, me and my man introduced me to these three things. They was millionaires though. One of the ladies, uh, a husband owned a pharmaceutical company from Europe, and just had her over here living and tucked off over there. They had like mountains out there. Like I mean, not mountains. They got big ass like castles in the mountains and shit out there. Uh, Washington, PA. So these people living in castles and shit. Uh, this lady buying uh, eight balls for a dog. I'm charging her like five hundred dollars for a two point eight. This short as hell outlet, and she feed it to the dog. She buy herself one. You know what I'm saying? Like I had customers like weird shit, and then Cyrus the virus. I could do something like this. I swear to God, I take sixty three grams of heart, take it from the crib, drive out there, give it to him, and he give me twenty five thousand dollars. Wow! I do that like, twice, or once, or twice a week. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, I, so, so you're doing good. Yeah. Um. Give me your give me your breakdown because you know uh, unfortunately when people when I did the war in Chirac, a lot of people understood Chicago through my lens, mm -hmm. which I, I, I think was a little bit inaccurate and incorrect. Like for example, to me it was just all you was doing was just repeating what you was reading. Yeah, but, but like, like for example, I call I call Lil Reese mm -hmm. the Grim Reaper. Oh yeah, the names was crazy. Act was I wrong? <laughs> the names was the names was wild. Act. I was with me and Lil Mouse and Shada. We was with uh, Dirk and Fredo in Atlanta the day that you named them Baby Fredo and all that. She was like, yeah. by that time, by the time Mouse got his name, it was kind of like a turn of a Durham and now like act yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Okay, you know okay, yeah. Cool, so now it's going up. But <laughs> it was up out here. Yeah, then I, 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 I call Lil Reese the Grim Reaper. I call, uh, I called, um, I remember hearing that Lil J got shot, he's surviving. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I thought usually when you get shot, you die. It was like, all right, this guy's got shot at Wolverine. He was dancing like three days later. Shit was Nigga, I got shot six times, close range like this. You got shot six times? Yeah, through my neck. I got shot through my neck. When? In and out. This happened in 2006. That's on that happened? Getting to the money. Um, I was back in Chicago. And um, we was fucking with the dog food and shit, me and my people and shit. And, um, What's dog food? Heroin. Heroin. Yeah. That's the shit you inject? Yeah. Holy shit. I'm scared of So you. so yeah. Snorted, smoking, whatever you want to do with this shit. But well, you know, we uh had a spot with his mama crib, you know what I'm saying? Where everything was at, you know what I'm saying? And motherfucker had went through there. Um I I had my work, but this is where we go mix everything at. Mm. I got the raw, but I take it down there to get it mixed and shit for the day. So when I went down, I made the call. Like, I'm on my way down there. So a little bro and I'm like, I bet they waiting on me and shit. By the time I get there, about 30, 40 minutes later, the phone off the hook. Damn, so I'm walking in the building. You know, it's a three flat. So it's like I walk in the gate to get to the front door of the three flat. Ring the doorbell, looking up. I see the window open. Uh, the phone ain't I'm like, damn, maybe the phone off the hook. And that, that wasn't sometimes irregular. So I'm like, damn, like, man, I'm ringing the doorbell. Like, where the fuck is they at? Come on. So I'm like, about, about the third time I ring that doorbell, I'm just like, man. The police in there. So mm. I'm like, man, let me walk the fuck <laughs> off. Just the I'm, just, look, look, I'm just like, man, the police got to be in there. Manager, I got dope on me and I got this uh, CX soy on me, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Big ass, fat ass Pelly on, leather boy with the fur on the hood. Cause that motherfucker then is like, serve as like almost like a vest. <laughs> a yeah, yeah. It slowed this shit down. So 
now I'm, I'm in the gate, so it's like I'm walking from the front door. Now I'm, I'm getting away from now here, coming down the stairs. Now in my mind, I'm like, usually the kids, they come down the stairs, they be loud like that, they come open the door for a motherfucker. So I'm like, man, there go the kids right there. So I'm hesitant. But those steps was the, the, those those it was it was heavy. What the fuck? I'm, like, I'm still thinking like it's the police. Like goddamn, like damn, I'm hit. I'm like damn. So when the door swung open, first thing I saw, Yankee ball hat, bulletproof vest outside of the hoodie. Detectives. Oh yeah, okay. But it wasn't really. Nigga scream out, man! Some good ass dope up there. But by the time he raised that bitch up, I turned my head. He started shooting me straight in my face like this. And I see the face and all that's on. I turned my head, I got shot through a bam. And I was a little taller than him. So it went through this side, came out this side. I still ain't fall. Bam, and then the motherfucker, bah, hit me right through my chest. It went in my chest, went out my side. And then it's like, uh, the other foe went bam, my femur, uh, my hip bone. And then I got them all stuck in my femur bone. I got a rod and shit in my femur bone and shit, holding my shit together and all that. So like damn, bam, 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 and that put me down. Now mind you, they coming out the door to get out this gate. I'm so right they in just the robbed the, the spot. Yeah. yeah, they robbed the spot. They got the AK that came up from stairs, all type of shit. But they ain't hit me with it. Thank God. You know, I got shot with a four five, which that's was hard too. But so bam, right, the leg shot broke me down. Thank God, because I'm still standing up while I'm getting hit, and that you know, a nigga tearing me up. But whole time I'm getting my gun out too. So about time the leg, my leg breaking off, fall, bam, nigga try to stand over me. I get my move out. Bah! Oh, hit him oh, in so the you own. did shot. Shoot back. Nigga, I shot 21 times on the, from the ground. So boom, it's Ted Vessa. Boom, it hit him. He hop back. Now he gone. It's four, it's three more. It's four of them. They, now they, they got to run past me. Now it's just cowboy shit on the ground. I'm hit up. I'm hurt. I'm bah, 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 I don't want nobody to stand on top yeah, of me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they, oh, oh, motherfuckers running. Bam, one of them got hit in the shoulder. He, he was a tall motherfucker too. He, boom, I see him get hit. He was holding, man, he, damn. So he, oh, he running down that way. Boom. So now the nigga with the K, they running out the back. So he, 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 they all jumping over me too. They been ducking the bullet. How many people? It was four. Yeah. So it's bam. So I'm, ma, 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 ma. I'm just really, I ain't even, to be honest, I, I was trying to knock one of their fucking heads off. Then my friend, he laughed because he's like, God damn, he's like, you killed the van right here though. He like, well, look where they at. He like, them was all his shots. You was trying yeah. to take their heads off from the ground. I'm, ma, 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 ma. So I'm missing everything. You know what I'm saying? It do it one time. The nigga with the chopper turned around once he got out the gate. He got the bag on him like this. He turned around that bitch and just shaw, 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 shaw. now I'm on the ground though. Act. So it's just tearing a big ass brick building up. Bricks hitting me in the head. And I'm covered up now. I, done, I don't even got nothing left. I done shot 21 times. He let that bitch off a few times and nothing didn't touch me. Bam. I was just on fire. I had long dreads so blood. My head was soaking red. So I'm like damn I'm hitting my head. I know I was in, it was in my neck. I thought I was hitting my head. My head was hurt so bad. Like damn. So boom, my people that they had they had tied my people upstairs. Upstairs they had tied them up and put white sheets on them. None of them got killed. But look, my uh, our little bro, they beat them all almost to death because even though I got shot six times when we both made it to the hospital, uh, they was telling me that he was worse off than me and all. They did, they beat him. Oh shit! They were beating him with shit. You know what I'm saying? Almost. Oh, they they wanted like like oh where the shit that type stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to get it out of them. Then they wind up, all they got was like, they got like 500 grams of mix and shit, some mixed ass, weak ass, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even worth nobody time, you know what I'm saying? But what was going to happen and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Fuck. Damn. Uh, yeah, so. did, did you ever, uh, did those guys ever get caught or not? No. Nothing. I mean, you know, when, when I, okay, when I went to the hospital or shit, when I'm in the hospital, the, uh, the feds come in there and shit, cause I, you know what I'm saying, and tell me like, uh, they asked me some names and I just, uh, I act like I blacked out. I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't know that my big brother was there. You know what I'm saying? And they was like, he go like, you can't ask him no question. Like, he, he passing out. Like, he almost about to die. They wouldn't even let the people, they had to stick. Now, this sound fucked up, but they had to stick that. Anybody that been shot up multiple times or something, they had to stick. I had so many holes in me. They had to stick this little thing in my ass to shoot this uh this gel that's going to leak out of every hole, wherever his holes at, just to see where, the, where my holes was at. Really? So it was like green shit coming out of hell. I'm like, damn, like that shit was, I was just hit up. But my brother, rest in peace, Yo-Yo, you know what I'm saying? He was there right there with me, holding my hand the whole time. Like, that's letting, like, man, you know what I'm saying? So, I got through that shit, you know what I'm saying? How long was that recovery? I think about six months, seven months. I was on a walker for a minute. Well, I was right back man, outside. Man, I used to be outside. Life, I man. used to be outside, and my 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 man's had brought me a Range Rover for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, boom, Range Rover pull up to the hospital for me when I leave. New one. 
So I'm bam, I got the I got my cane. I mean my walker. I, he gave me a brand new SK. And the right, you know what I'm saying? I'm back outside. Shit. It's back, you know, nothing never stops, bro. It's just like back outside. This one, I wasn't even really smoking that much then, but now I'm just smoking hella ounces of weed today because I'm not, the pain medicine is, uh, is, is like, uh, it's, it's working, but it's like, it's fucking me up. Mm. So it's like, man, I'll just smoke weed. So the weed was like, like weed just like cured the pain for me. Like the whole month, so I just sit in the living room, blow. My folks come through, you know what I'm saying? And shit, I recovered. I got back strong, you know what I'm saying? Jeez. Got back strong, shit. Got right back to this shit. So, um... There's a few people in, in Chicago I feel like I know, uh, I've heard about their names, and they're not of the the generation of, like, the rappers or whatever. Um, obviously, your name is, is, is came up, um, but we've also heard of, let me see who else, Jojo Capone, mm-hmm. who else? Uh, there's another dude I always hear about his name. It's another guy. I can't remember who it is. But there's another guy. Mm. What's the role of like you know like say like you guys like it's an OG like you know what I mean? Shit, ain't no roles. <laughs> shit, man, your fucking business. Stay out the way. Just whatever you got something to do with type shit. Like for example, if there's like issues, as far as the, as far as ain't no no nah, ain't no none of that no more. So when they come to you and be like, hey, we got issues with these guys. Like, could you help us solve it? They don't do that. A motherfucker be dead by the time you hear about the shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't do that there. Mm-mm. Ain't no big homie. Yeah, big homie and all this. Now, like, they got respect and be called big homie and unk and all that shit and this and that. But, you know, the big homies where we from, we know, we, they know, we know our positions and shit. Stay out these little shorties' way because, you know, they going to do what they do. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take God for them to change. You know what I'm saying? Mm. All right, so back to the nicknames. <laughs> Tell me the ones I got right. Lil Reese, the Grim Reaper. What did he Grim? What? Did he, that means the Grim Reaper. That means he run around knocking shit off. You know what I'm Listen, saying? man, the so reason why I named him the Grim Reaper every look, time he tweet, I see somebody pass away. I don't know I what mean, was going on. We ain't gonna put that on Lil Reese though. No, I'm not saying he did it, but I'm saying. So why would you call him the Grim Reaper? He must have had a mystical power. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He Shout out to Lil Reese though, man. <laughs> He ain't in nobody jail cell. He ain't a part of no I'm, shit like that. He good. I'm, I'm actually happy that, you know, he's still, because there's been many attempts at his life. Why do you think he doesn't move? You don't live in Chicago, so do you? I mean, I got a house in Chicago. My kids still, everybody still there. Like? I just move around. I got Kevin, you know, I'm, we all over the place. Yeah, house there, Arizona, Atlanta, Miami, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I just be on the move, but yeah, I'm going to fly in Chicago in the morning. I'll be with Charles Dwight in the morning. He called, really? Yeah. You know, that's like my arch enemy on the internet, him and Dewberry, but. You know, sure. you know, I'm gonna ask you some questions about uh, um, <laughs> um, Kevo and also uh, yeah. David Charleston. Mm-hmm. Okay, what about uh, I, I, I called Chief Keith Baphomet? <laughs> Baphomet. No, he ain't the devil. It was something that I think the music. He's connected. a good kid. He's a talent. He? Why? Why don't he get credited for being so talented and bring us a new genre to hip hop? As a as an icon and all, even though he is, we know he is. But why we don't hear more of that? Why I got to be disrespect because he come from a gangster city and he had to come up with well, the gangster way? Well, he came ways. out and said he was a savage, and I was like, well, he must be terrorizing the whole goddamn city. I don't know. No, because Chicago's full of savages. And he's from Oblock. No, he's from Lamron. Oh, he's from Lamron. <coughs> yeah. So wait, but, but I feel like he put on these particular. He places. put on all they ass. He put on all us. I should say. He, so he, he was a good kid. What is that? I mean, he was a talented. What's a good kid in Chicago? Yeah, he was. I don't think he was out killing people or nothing like that. You know, he's just a, a, you know, just like all the rest of them, just trying to make it, trying to get to the bag. You know what I'm saying? Like shit. I mean, of course he's gonna defend himself if he and two of them motherfuckers got ops and this and that. What are he supposed to do? I don't think he's one of the ones delivery running around looking for motherfuckers and just doing drill after drill. I think his talent was more. He was more focused on that talent at a certain at a certain point in his life. Shit. How did Chicago feel about him? Kind of just like pretty much going to LA and never coming back. It was the smartest thing he could have did. Really? Of course. Isn't that kind of like abandoning like the place and the the the? the well, what happens when the place abandons you? Do you stay there, or do you take your millions and you go live a successful life and take care of you, yours, and your family? But I don't think Chicago ever abandoned. 
like um, Chief Keith. I think I think Chicago. I mean, he, he has shit going on internally. You know, that's that's with the BD. That's they shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know. Because if it was so love for him, what well, he wouldn't have had to leave. He had a mansion out there. He had a mansion for the longest out there, like north and northern Chicago and shit like that. So yeah, that was a wild mansion. I remember hearing shootouts over there. I was wild like, as fuck, right, boy. They, 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 they. I was up there plenty of nights. Me and Mouse used to go <laughs> plenty of nights. The wild as hell up there. Wait, so you were cool with Keith? Yeah, of course. That my uh, shout to my bro Shorty Six, him and Chief Keith, uh, the original CEO of uh, Glory Gang, Dro. You know that was you know we was close to them, so we used to be always be up there. And then when I got Mouse, you no, know, they Chief Keith fucked with them. How he had a song with all of them himself and Chief Keith. And Chief Chief told him one thing when Mouse was fourteen: I'm not gonna do no song with you because I'm not about to help you pass me up. And it was mm. simple as that. Hey. Ooh. How is that relation? If, if you're a GD and he's a BD, like, is there like politics? Like, nope. it, it, not so. So it doesn't like fall along that line. No. So like, you wouldn't have like an allegiance to like little J and them beef with him. I'm gonna give a fuck. They ain't got nothing to do with you no. Know? No, I fuck with them. So that's on them. They got into it with them. I don't give a fuck because you was supposed to be GD. I don't even know what you know. what I'm saying we rocking with it. We know we were doing some getting some money shit. I don't know what these other niggas doing. You know, I'm not against them or nothing like that. But I just, you know, we doing what we doing. Fredo Santana, I called him. Rest in peace. I love it, Fredo. My boy, real. Call him the Shirek Demon. It was just something about perfect him. Perfect like, name. It was a perfect name. It was something about him. Like I felt like he never said a lot. Really savage, savage squad. Nigga. And, 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 he, <laughs> and you know what's so interesting? Interesting about him. He never looked like he was eager to get into it with nobody. But it looked like nobody was eager to get because into it. Because he knew the him. powers he possessed. It's like if you know you possess this power of, at the snap of a finger, hundred niggas to be in this bitch doing whatever you want him to do. It, you only you only really deserve that power or know how to maintain it. Well, you know how to control it. You ain't reckless with it. Mm. And he wasn't a reckless shorty. I think he was about that bag. He wasn't about no pussy shit, but he was about he was on that bag. But but he's definitely like he that. definitely put in that work, you know. Hmm. Gotta ask Jay Main and all about how short he, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think Jay Main was. To me, Fredo was always the one, just the way he carried himself and everything. I just, I had a, over, a lot of respect for Shorty. Mm. Lil Dirk. That, he was like family to us, as far as hella bands and all that. Yeah. He loved him, Mouse. He loved the top shotter. We loved him, D Thang, Chino. They had SB in there. Like, we. It was like family. They embraced Mouse. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to see Mouse take out. They wanted him to be the biggest. Dirk was in jail when Mouse first got out. First thing Dirk did when he got out, that's when he had cut his hair off. After the, this ain't what you want shit, he had just got out for that whatever the fuck he got out for. He came straight from that county jail, and he came straight to 119 to a GD neighborhood to do that Katrina video with Mouse. Mm. Pulled up, raggedy ass hoop these and shit. He ain't get no fuck. He pulled right up on Shorty. I had the Benz, the BMW, the Ranges, and all that shit. Kanye Boy GLC and all them was out there and everything. Boom. Give them the car, they do the video. Bam. Dirk get Dirk. I got I got enough songs with Mouse and Dirk to do three, four albums. You know what I'm saying? Really? Hell yeah, they did a lot of work together. It was just the natural family thing, like out of town, doing shows with them. Like we knew the Migos when they was wearing white t-shirts and shit. Like we've been like, like Mouse grew up in this shit. So we was, we was in that. You know, half my people BMF. So when when Mouse got popping with Lil Wayne shit, I took him straight to Atlanta. I, I feel like Dirk's the one who who still, you know, as big as he gets mainstream wise, man, he's always seemingly on the ground for Chicago. Man, he the man for Chicago, bro. He number one. Mm. Let me see who else. Lil J. <laughs> man, stop it. Is it Chirac Wolverine? <sighs> Not the name for him. I, I, I heard Shorty would beat a motherfucker ass, but a lot of gay motherfuckers would beat a motherfucker ass. He's so, not, he not really gay though, right? Yeah, he like, I mean, he like transmissions or trans, whatever they calling that shit. Somebody trans. had told me that he's only like that in jail. On the street, no, no, like no. Women's. You got you got to listen to like Butter and all the niggas that was around him and shit. They said he been like that. You got to go pay attention to some of their little interviews and shit where they let you know about him. Like, no, nah, he, he been like, ain't no secret. Like, what secrets is shocking to y'all sometimes, and not like in other places for us, but. It's like it ain't shocking. They already knew that about him. They've been saying. So that. you trying to tell me that Lil J was always a mechanic? Yeah, wow. that's what. That's I, I see. Me personally, I never fucked with him. I never. If they had, if they went on that money shit or getting to it on some little bum shit, I won't give a fuck. If they was GDBD, whatever the fuck. I wasn't fucking with them. I'm we chasing bags, Dirk, 
uh, G Herb and them and all of them and that. You know what I'm saying? We 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 in this circle, Chief Keith. We over here. We a part of that circle with that first tour that's supposed to kicked off. That they supposed to get him off for a couple of minutes and do the Chirac tour that went up to shit. You know, King Louis and them. You know what I'm saying? Whatever happened to King Louis? <sighs> Man, shout out to Lou. Man, there was a time I felt like he was heavily in the narrative of you know Chicago drill. I think I think he's one of the pioneers. He's one of the forefathers for sure. Whatever happened? I know he had gotten shot. I think the beef for him a little dirt kind of just. I think Dirk's success and uh, probably a little lack of Louie not going as hard as he once was. And then maybe Drake halfway sending him off. Because you know how it'd be a motherfucker pull you up. Like, yeah, you OVO and this yeah, and Didn't Drake give like an OVO owl chain? And it was like a curse because after that, it was nah, no he more. Gave, he, he took it back and gave it a 600 Breezy. And I don't know why he did that. I don't even know no music 600 Breezy. Like, no disrespect to Shorty and this and that, but... I think 600 Breeze would be like a good soldier. Like To who? Well, like, I ain't gonna lie to you. 600 Breeze would come off like extra gangster. But when you do that, that's almost like an act, bro. I remember when he went down to Savannah to slide for Vaughn. That shit was crazy. Did anybody die? Nobody came outside. <laughs> like, I was like, that, that's crazy. Uh, why he didn't go inside? <laughs> I don't think he knew a house. But like, he, he was driving around. He was on live, too. So I was like, you telling me he drove down there to waste some time? He went on a vacation. Now, I'm going to be honest, 600 Breezy is different because you got to think about it. He ran into to, 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 to King Yella and um, Billy well, Black. You got to talk all. about the caliber of niggas. He ain't running to no monster GDS niggas that was like overly looking for him. They wanted to punish him. And I'm going to be honest with you, I think also 600 Breezy look like the only one who look like he lift weights. Everybody else got in shape. Yeah, he in shape. He like, he beat the shit out of the motherfucker. And now ain't nobody said he was no goofy or nothing like that. It's just like, we talking about Chicago, bro. Yo, he went it to take say, a lot to be that there, bro. Bro, he went to say, you, you know what I called him? I called him a Shirek Max Payne. Nigga had two guns in his hands at all times. Come on. What, on pictures and videos? I'm guessing the real life. Only, only time you saw him, right? Yeah, when and I when, seen when, him. And, and when you seen him on pictures and videos. I never seen his hand free. Hmm. Sound like content to me. He from Chicago though. Like you, it sounds like this. Chicago content to me. But Chicago niggas don't really indulge in content like that, do they? No, we're not talking about FYB. Saying, bro. FYB J May is like hilarious. Yeah, that's new. That's that's new. You know who I wish I knew about when I was covering the war in Chirac? I don't know if you like 051 Melly. Man, rest in peace. I know all his people. Um 051 Driller, Kiddo. Shout out to Kiddo. I know you need to have them up here. I, I heard he They could give you a story about Melly met better than anybody. Everybody keep telling me he was the, the, the Grim Reaper. For sure. And, 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 and I feel bad because I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't even know nothing. Like, I'm over here, I'm reading tweets. His name was ringing more than all, all of them. Like, it, it, then it'd be like, that's why, like, the, the regular Chicago people are like, man, act a goofy, man. But it'd be because you just don't know. Yeah. You telling these niggas this and that, that they supposed to be this over Chicago and this and that. And Chicago looking at like, man, these little boys, they ain't even come outside, man. What are you talking about? King Von, he was one of those. For sure. Why did some people even believe that King Von was gay? Like Because the, motherfuckers are goofies. What would you, you, what would you maybe maybe motherfuckers ain't been around real creepy killers and just sinister people. So it's like taunting motherfuckers they didn't did harm to. And it's like on some, like, like Charles White be with his 9-9 and boo-boo. Mm. That was that. That's all mm. that was. Like I know y'all want me to come on that deck and just beat me and stab me and kill me. Nope. It's like, nah, I'm gay. Like, I mean, let me play with him. I'm going to fuck you later and this and that. <laughs> what in your mind, coming from that little boy, what in the fuck else would you thought he was talking about besides I'm going to kill all y'all later? I'm going to fuck you later, act. And we into it. You think that's gay? And you think, oh, man, this nigga gay. And then you got a hole in your head. Now, who, like, huh? Yeah, now, he seemed like a violent person. You ever seen I that? think he was kind of cool though, because because look how free hearted he was and spirited. Man, that man got that bag and came and took care of his people, bro. He legendary for that. Can't nobody take that away from him. No, oh, Chirac, deep, none of that shit, bro. None of them did that. He did that. Hey, hey, did you see like the document? They called him a serial killer. I ain't gonna lie, I might. Be. Yeah, it, it, I said you arguing with a motherfucker from Chicago, Chicago David. Y'all yeah. got to start. It ain't checking in and this and that, but start doing a little bit more homework to see who people is so you don't waste your time. And then to a big old city that probably uh, embrace you and understand how you coming, but you've given certain, you know what I'm saying, motherfucker. Isn't platforms. he the guy? No. He's a clothing guy. He used to have a little sprinkle, the shirts with the, cup, the glitter on them. 
Yeah. The fuck fame shirts and yeah. this and that. Like, and it's just a glittery I shirt. I thought it was a street dude. Type of shit King Yellow used to wear. I, like with the Slim G side too. Like, man, y'all run around this bitch with fuck fame shirts on, the white ones, talking about y'all getting money. So he don't like me really, but he don't speak for nobody, man. He's powerless. But he's a street dude, though. He's powerless. He ain't no fucking street dude. He's a fucking fashion designer. He make t-shirts. You gotta oh. stick to that t-shirt brand type shit. Explain to me how somebody could possibly, and we can take it off Vaughn, but like, how does somebody in Chicago, like, I always wonder, I'm like, yo, in no other American city can niggas have, like, a kill streak going on? Like, you got four bodies and you ain't get arrested? Like, how does this work? I was once told by somebody, if you're going to catch a body, the best place to do it was in Chicago. Because nine times I said, even if you get caught, you know, the chances of beating the murders and shit is that, you know, if ain't no witnesses and this. I mean, you know, you just got a higher chance to beat it and coming like maybe in New York and then you know you're going to get slammed or. Yeah, in New York, you're definitely going to get You're going to jail because you even got a gun. They're going to charge you for the gun for real and all type of shit. Yo, I, I literally said this. I said, yo, that O Block 6 case mm. um, or O Block 5, I don't know what the number is. Um, is that- 6 1 killed itself. Who? Remember in the beginning of the shit, one of the shorties and shit killed herself. Oh, you're right. Yeah. If that happened in New York, they don't even go to trial. They was, Damn. They was just hanging right there. I like, feel like they trial went kind of fast. Well, to be a federal murder trial, that shit went. That shit was what I less than it, a month. It was kind of open and shut. And I think they were requesting yeah. a speedy trial. Let me ask you a question. I seen Mama Duck, and and, and, and I wonder where you fall on like um, <coughs> watching like the parents of some of these people who lost their their loved ones. Like, Mama Duck got to know her son was making songs like Dead Bitches. Of course and her you know. Son, her son was basically bragging about punishing Listen, the I, You got kids? No, nah, I don't. Of course she know what her son was doing. But guess what? That's still her baby. She can give a fuck less what you, me, or anybody else talking about. Mm. See what I'm saying? It's like, for I got four kids. But do you think it's hypocritical, though? I mean, I just look at it as a mama. Your mama's supposed to be your ride or die. Right or wrong, right? True. She's supposed to go hard for her son. If she ain't going crazy and hard for him and this and that, then who else supposed to? I feel really bad for Muwap. I don't know why. I feel like because you grew to like a nigga because y'all just grow. I mean, niggas yeah. grow to like niggas, but niggas live these gangster lives. I mean, it's consequences with this shit. You know. What did you, you think? feel sorry for him? Nigga, go get some money on his books. Get him, send him a lawyer. Other than that, what are you, what are you worried about it for? I think when Vaughn died, I remember watching him and I could see he was going through so much pain and grief mm. that I felt like he he felt a little bit of burden to try to continue that legacy. But then he got locked up. And then he got locked up and I feel like, you know, he went he's going through his own trials and tribulations. He's pretty much about to get life. And pretty much, you know, basically there's so many lives that got lost. Um, that's, the, that's the sad part. So many talented lives gone. What did you think about when, 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 when the news came of Vaughn dying? Died in Atlanta outside of a club. Just is just so saddening. Just hurting because he was on. He's niggas passed Dirk up. He was he was there. Uh, do Chicago niggas move around like the United States and 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 with that air like New yes. York niggas do that? Be like yo, nigga, I'm from New York. Like yo, we in Alabama. Oh, these niggas pussy. I'm from New York. Like that's what yes. people in New York move around. Chicago. Usually when you hear niggas say they're from Chicago, they're, they're kind of puffing their chests out like yo, y'all should know what type of time I'm on. I mean, yes. I mean, because <clears throat> going out of town and hearing, like, like I, I know everybody, like, as far as industry rides and a lot of real street niggas and shit. So sometimes I'll go out of town and then I hear these, my brother's like, man, you know, ooh, I came down, you know, yeah, that nigga. Ooh. And then you'd be like, stop it, bro. Like, who? <laughs> what the fuck on? Nigga do all this talking crazy from Chicago, Chicago talk, you know what I'm saying? But don't live there. Ain't been living there. Like, for when King Yellow was screaming, um, Peace and shit in Chicago, bro. Just live your life. You in Vegas, go. You know what I'm saying. You don't even go that way. You know what I'm saying. And you shouldn't. You you should go on with your life. And what's up with King King Yellow? I don't know what's up with folks. Like I don't know that the little <laughs> the little telling everybody gang shit was kind of crazy. I don't, I wouldn't expect that. People from be him. snitching in, in Chicago like that. Hell yeah. But do people care though? Man, hell yeah. If you get snitched on, you <laughs> oh, yeah, damn yeah, you go yeah, kill yeah. shit. What do you mean? Did King Yellow snitch? He gave information. Is that snitching? Yes. The right. feds and the police go off what? Information, right? Yeah. What did he what did he supply them with? Give him some information. Yo, he's a gang member, he's a gang member, he got this gun right here, like I got this gun over here. Confirmed information. From a confirmed gang member, right? 
Is it snitching if you're just basically confirming things they kind of already know? You don't know what the fuck. How the fuck you know what the police know? Hey, what about the, like, say, for example, the, the YSL case. They say, yo, yo, the nigga on the stand is playing mind games with him. So it's like, Man, like all you, that shit for sure. You try nigga. to psych him out. Them you know lawyers, I mean? in the case, they just looking at him. Do you see how they be looking at him like he half crazy? Yeah. Because though none of that shit mean nothing. Ain't no, oh, he's doing so, a crazy magic trick. Man, is it? <laughs> he fucking himself off. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Ain't no such thing, bro. At the end of the day, they're going to go by the law. You know what I'm saying? Or they're going to try to, you know what I'm saying? Do, do you think Dirk, I asked him this question when I interviewed him. Do you think maybe he's getting closer to being a little bit less divisive and trying to be on some together stuff? He's been, you know, he, he, he's, I guess he was always Muslim, but he's been embracing yeah. the faith a lot more. Yeah, I and, see that. And, and in that faith, definitely comes with forgiveness. I think it's saving his life. What, why do you, what do you think? That? I'm just saying, it's taking him down a better path. You know, the way he think, you know, he already suffered the most losses out of everybody. The closest losses. He's so so he's been through a lot. So for what he got, he deserved kind of. Lusky, D-Thing, uh, Chino. Chino. Rest peace, Chino. That was my nigga. And deep thing, nigga. Shit, straight up. They helped us a lot with Mouse in the beginning. We bounced ideas and shit off each other a lot. They was a big help. Why do you think his faith is helping him though? You think it's keeping him on a level? It's head? keeping him on a level here. It's not. It's not keeping him. Um, it's not keeping his mind in the gutter. He, he probably is. His faith is probably going to Allah, God. You know what I'm saying? He not thinking about what's going on on 63rd or like. You know what I'm saying? What do you think people then? Do you think people in Chicago think like, oh, nah, he not like that no more? Like, yo, yeah, that nigga. Once it's like in you, see, we gotta say, once it's in you, it's in you. It's like riding a bike; you never forget how to do it. So just because I changed today, you think that that bike still ain't in me if somebody try to harm me? Mm. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's it. What's in him is in him. He's going off to be a star. He don't have time for the little. Uh, for the for the drill scene, for the Chirac Dean, all that that shit behind motherfucker. He he up there, mm. he up there. When you linked to Bandman Kevo, I used to cover Bandman Kevo back in the day, and I remember looking at it. I, I'm gonna be honest with you, it was the most ridiculous shit I ever seen. And to be honest, I thought it was mostly cap. Like oh, I was yeah. just like, it's no, no way this nigga's making money like this. Oh, you like, because him. he was showing a lifestyle that I don't even think the. I, I think the rappers were envious of him. And I'm like, everybody, the drug dealers, rappers, everybody. How did you link with Kevo and what was what was Kevo's impact even on like Chicago? Shout, shout out to my nigga Heavy Low from my 19th. He, 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 he was like Kevo pro today. Like when he was hustling and, you know, Kevo was teaching him ways of the cracking cars and how to, you know what I'm saying, get the cars and how to, you know, finesse and get that bag, you know? So. Well, Kevo meant around them times, you know what I'm saying? That's around the Adriana Club time, Ari and all them, you know, this shit popping, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, we going up, the drill scene hit, all eyes on Chicago. But what was special about Kevo, he was the only one that didn't have a crew that he needed financially. He was the bad. He had his own. So, <coughs> for instance, you were going to Adriana's, we got to get smoke, get smoke, went double down on uh, Dedication 4. They going to play that. I walk in there. They going to play that shit three, four times, Wayne, and this and that. But then I'm going to keep hearing random band man Kevo songs all night long. He was ahead of the curve. He'd go up there and holler at the owner, bam, bless the owner, bag. You know what I'm saying? Shit, play my shit all night type shit. So now now the gangster and the drug and that bitch, now we listen to some car cracker and finesse music and all that. They in there buying 20 bottles. You might have three bottles. They didn't brought 20 in. No, it's all the crazy money. You know what I'm saying? These they got free money. Mm. They ain't did shit all day but get free money and shit. Gucci'd up. You know what I'm saying? You could use just like, damn. So I was a part of that to see like, damn, like nigga, we getting money and shit. But what the fuck is he doing? It was not a little bit more respectable, at least because in, in a sense of we were seeing a bunch of rappers kind of beef and no money was really getting, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like exchange while with Kevin was like it was straight up money, play. straight cash, straight cash. No, no incidents. Nobody never robbed him. I'm not gonna say nobody ever tried to because I, I know um, his father had, told me about an incident where he had to grab them guns and shit because his daddy's a gangster from the projects. So 
You know, he said he had to grab them guns and shoot out to them hotels, make sure Cabo can get out the hotels with the money and make sure he's safe and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So it was it probably was rough for Kevo to on the come up side because of course a motherfuckers probably want to get him, kidnap him, do all type of shit to him. You know what I'm saying? Because they was doing that to the car crackers and shit. A lot of theirs was falling victim to motherfuckers getting robbed at them currency exchanges when they coming out with fifty thousand and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. When did you link with Kevo? Um, Ke- oh, okay. Well, Heavy Low, him and Heavy Low, I knew each other for years or whatever. So bam, Heavy from Mousehood. You know what I'm saying? So now I got Mouse. Uh, Kevo had did a song with Mouse. Right before he was getting picked up, he already had his time and everything. We just so called Million the Cash with Mouse, and uh, you know, Heavy had introduced us and this and that. We were going back and forth, so he, uh, Mouse he was trying to shoot the video, but the feds came and got uh, Kevo like a little a couple of days or weeks early or whatever, so he couldn't get it done. So Kevo a real one, you know, he he a real business. Like his mind is, you know, it's different. He ain't in no gang, so bad. He shoot to the feds. He tell my man Heavy, you know, get up with big folks because he liked what I did with Mouse. He like, however, he like, I never had no manager, I never had no help with my shit. You know what I'm saying? You had blast and them what's some shit like he was like he wanted he wanted a team. He didn't have a team, you know what I'm saying, as far as this music shit and shit go. So he's like, he wanted to do that shit. So he called me from the feds. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, big folks, I need to lock in with you. I'm like, what's up? What we trying to do? You know what I'm saying? He said, I got a plan. He said, just listen to this. And he used to call, I could put my baby mama on the phone out. He used to call with the craziest talks from a nigga from jail you could ever hear. What you doing today, big folks? Shit, how you doing? G? You good in there? Yeah, I'm good. I was just looking at the, uh, I see some new Lambo trucks coming out in like a couple years. I think I'm going to get like two or three of those. And I'm going to, yeah, because look at those VVSs on us. And then I'm, I'm going to spend that. Then I'm going to have the best clothes. I'm going to have the best body. I'm going to have this and that. And I'll just be listening to Kevo like, I'll be looking at the phone sometimes like, there go Kevo calling from the feds. My baby mom be like, oh my God, he, he about to talk about, he about to buy a jet today. He get on the phone. Yeah, I'm gonna get a yacht. I think I'm gonna say, <laughs> wait, how did Kevo get locked up for all that scam and come back out so rich? Like, how does, how does that work? Because God blessed him. He came back he home. Make, he, he, came came back, he had brains to do what he did in the first place to go to jail. He just used his brain for the better of good instead of doing wrong. He said he had a conversation with some Asian motherfuckers and that made billions of dollars on some Ponzi scheme. He told him, like, nigga, stop being the doer and just, you know, you could teach people. Like, you know what I'm saying? So on initially coming out doing that OnlyFans shit, it probably broke crazy because people thought he was gonna get on there and teach them how to hack and finesse and do all that shit. But all he simply did was, no, I know some real shit. I know how you could clean your real credit. I know about financial literacy for real. You know what I'm saying? Even though I, I was a scam in this net, but I, I know money, I know how to, you know what I'm saying? So why lie? Never knew it was a lane for that. Then we discovered they don't teach this shit in school, especially us black people and nothing like that. Now it's then it like Kevo has a college on OnlyFans all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. First money on it, he made a million dollars. Really? Yes. You know, all this shit is dog. You need to go check it out. You know what I'm saying? It's first money on that motherfucker. He did like a bad, uh, uh, what's that little girl? Bad bunny, you know? Bad baby, whatever. Damn. He did one of them moves and shit. Kevo really ran it up off OnlyFans. Yes. You know, I kind of regret. Like, I almost feel like I should have got on OnlyFans, man. No, no, some like fuck. Right, shit. and I don't know fuck shit. See, the yeah, first, but, but see, it's just people, like, people are so uh, small minded. The first thing they gonna think, man, some freaky shit. No, nah, I'm making twelve million dollar shit, nigga. Like, like, you know like, what I'm saying? It depends on what I, you want to put on there. I think now. about like you know, I stream all the time, and I feel like I'll be having fifteen thousand people watch me, and I'm like breaking down the music business, mm-hmm. and how radio works, how. All of this game that is common. Giving out free mentorships. Way, nobody teaches you this. Yeah, you giving out free Usually, mentorships. Usually you go get signed and get raped in, a, in a, your first couple of deals before you even learn it on your own. And I'm over here, I'm, I'm trying to educate. And I'm like, if I did charge for this, I'm wondering how much it would be worth. But then when I hear how, how Kevo, you know, like. Kevo you know, you know why you charge? Because you, the charging separates the serious people from the bullshit people. So you don't have to waste your time. If somebody want to seriously learn that craft and they really serious about it and you about to waste your time, well, not waste, but you about to put your time and give them real knowledge and understanding of this business, you need to be compensated for it. And the people that's willing to compensate you for it are the people that want the information for real. That's the people you spend the time with giving them the knowledge. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if that wave just passed. Like, I should I should have started that shit in the pandemic, man. Yeah, I mean. Also, I, Ruby I, Rose shit, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> like when it, was, when it was going crazy, that what pandemic. It was, it was a pandemic, too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Everybody in the house, where everybody trying to learn something. Everybody needs some money. Everybody. One thing. And it's Bam Man Kevo. I, I might learn how to crack a card or something. Here come 30, 36, 40,000 subscribers at $50 a month. You do the math. That's one thing I, I like about what Kevo did. Um, Kevo always has these new innovative ways of making For income. Sure. And, and, and especially now, they're all legal. For sure. For but sure. like, 
he's always thinking outside the box and I think that's the genius in him, which I started looking at because I used to look at people who are scammers as low down dirty thieves. Like, you know, the person who's a scammer, just a thief, um, kind of still do look at him as a thief, but I, it, what I've realized, especially with somebody like Kevin. How you view bank robbers? The motherfuckers are going there and then lay the bank down. How you view that? I, I view them as dumber thieves. Like if, if, if you're gonna rob or you're gonna scam, do whatever, if you wanna get money, if, if you want to get money, the dumbest way is to pull out a gun and, and ask yeah, for it. Yeah, right, of course. Because that's the thing now, that gets now, you the most Now, what time. if you just use your brain and what you do don't affect no personal person is hitting these banks, these establishments? But, but don't you, scam usually affects, like, you know, whoever the girl that goes in the, the fucking bank to go get whatever, that motherfucker's credit I mean, is yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> that the motherfucker's car burnt. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what banks got insurance for, Act, Stop it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Again, well, I guess it connects to to our Kevo. I think Kevo is a the same type of ingenuity for him to figure that out that he got that rich. When yeah, he was marketing in genius because he did marketing to even get the cards to what he did on Facebook and all that to even draw people to want to send their cards from cross country to him. That's marketing genius. And he figured it out how to do do it legally. Yeah, I think that was dope. Um, they keep saying Kevo got a BBO. What's going on? Liposuction act. Well, you, you take. I mean, I need to get it. You know what I'm saying? I had surgery, but I mean, uh, I had kidney surgery and shit, so I don't really be fucking with my body like that. But I mean, when he came out, you go look at his pictures today. He came out of jail. He was swole. He just had that gut. He wanted to get rid of that gut. He went and got rid of that gut. Why they make fun of Kevin but not Drake? Somebody just said Drake had the, the, the little belly. I think stuff. I think he's the same doctor type shit. Oh, the same. And doctor? a couple more motherfuckers. Mmm. Sent the number to Wack. Did Wack do it? I don't think he did. Shit. Now, Kevin offered to pay for, pay for some shit for me. I was just like, I'm, uh, I am really think that I go do some surgery like that. It's like God has is, God is told me, like, hey, listen, listen, man. <laughs> you, you have a lot of good things going for you in life. A motherfucker calling you fat, you got to live with that. It's cool. You can't be perfect. You can't, like, like <laughs> you don't get to walk around life and you See, Kevo, perfect. Kevin believe in trying to be perfect. Mm. He don't think like that. Really? Yeah, or he Whatever offered. perfect in his eyes, he trying to reach that. Yeah, he offered to do, um, he offered to pay for some shit. I was just too scared. Uh, <laughs> what the hell happened? He definitely, with his, he definitely got a bag to the side for me to get into. It. Just, what the hell happened with that with his baby mama, man? Goofy shit. You know, um, pacifier get took out the mouth. The, oh, you want to be honest? Because yeah. Kevo, he always, you know what I'm saying? When they left Chicago, when he first started striking gold with OnlyFans, they went to Atlanta first. Atlanta is Atlanta. It's, you know what I'm saying? And running around, little thick ass bitches, this and that. But Miami, a different beast. And when he moved to Miami, like he kept his house uh, in Atlanta, which wound up going to KR Osiris, and he wound up losing and this shit on some broke shit. But uh, he left and went to Miami. And when he went to Miami, you know, Kevo liked them Latin girls. He liked them BBL. He got it. He got it. He got a uh, preference. Mm. So you know, even though he got the baby mama, she looked good and this and that. It's still like my Chicago girl. It's still kind of like, all right, what you about to do? You know, he gave a, a hell of opportunities. I'm pretty sure, like you get your girl, like what you what business you want to do? Uh huh. Do this. Here go a hundred thousand. Do that. You know what I'm saying? Like let's try to do this and that. Or try. She was like. Um, I had love for Dan too though, like a little sister or something like that. So I'm not down or nothing like that, but it's like she didn't want to do anything. He was t- telling her, like, me and my baby mama try to help her, like, because my baby mama no credit like Kevin. So he's like, I right, you could be the female Kevin. You my girl. The women sometimes don't like dealing with men, mentors, and like so you could you could teach them this shit. You know what I'm saying? Be the leading lead female for the financial literacy. She couldn't do it. That's the problem with certain women, like, you know, like uh, some women like it to be already made, they don't want to be the hustler. Yeah. And, and and it has to be within that person or not. Like, no matter, you can't teach them. You can no, show them a million times, no. but if they don't want to get up and go do that shit, it's a dub. And then now, now you got, you see my teeth? We got dentists that own companies and all that. They loving them. They loving the way you looking at this and that. They, 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 Miami is sucking Kevin. When he is Miami now, as you know, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, of but course. you talking about the beginning, it's like, damn, it's like, he calling me, like, hey, man, middle of the night. Well, 
she calling me like he ain't been to this house. They was living in the Paramount. He he haven't been here, and I don't know. he calling me from some you know what I'm saying from all type of cribs. And I know which girl he was with by the headboard and shit. Like yeah, yeah, where the yeah. fuck is you at, nigga? Like as you go home, he be like, man, let me call you back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So he always left me to deal with that. That's why we so super close. He left me to deal with a lot of his personal shit. You know what I'm saying? So like, damn, to the point where we had them calls. Like, damn, just you know what I'm saying, just. Take care of them kids. Make sure everything's straight. He provide y'all everything y'all need. She well, uh, this and that. He got all these expensive cars and said, I don't want to drive this and that. Damn, I'm going to say, I'm going to get you a car. When I got a Benz truck. That fit her fine and this and that. Ooh, cool. Everything she have asked for. Now with the jewelry shit, he got her the Roly, the decent Roly. She, he got a, a fake Cuban because he's like, where is she even going? He paid, see, he had when he got all that shit from Ice Black and all he's like, I'm not about to spend another 60 on her no Cuban. She don't even do shit. Her charm, that damn charm was real and this and that. He gave her a few things to say. Like, he was preparing to like, if anything ever happened to me, God forbid or whatever, whatever happened with us, you can always take this jewelry, sell it, go get your, go do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? These little pieces right here get you a couple, 20,000 or something real quick. To, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, he did what he could do. It, when you know when you done with a motherfucker, you done with him. And nobody can't make I it was to the point like make him come home. I'm we grown. I can't make him do shit. So it's like uh, it's frustrating. We all in Chicago. She having breakdowns with the kids. My baby mama talking off ledges. Like, man, just go in the bathroom, get away from the kids, and you just disturb, like getting disturbing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. We way in Chicago, they way in Miami. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And she going crazy and shit. And then the Kayla Nicole shit happened and it made her go even crazier. And it, it was just, wow. So it was like, her whole thing was get back. Like 16 and all that. Like another thing, if I'ma say it. If you can't talk to your homie little Boom and, the, and, and we gotta be, oh, he's a creepy, he's weird, which he did some creepy, weird, goofy shit. You can't talk to 16 no more because oh, yeah. 16 has a sexual assault in his background. No, he don't got the, uh, yeah. I'm positive. Positive. 18 years old, 13 year old girl, incident at a school, at the school program five times. Mama no press, uh, dropped the charge. She was 18? She was 15? Th she was 13. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, little oh. girl. So, you know, that really happened. He has an A, B in his background of sexual abuse, uh, uh, sexual assault on a minor. Did, did he plead guilty to that? They dropped it at the police station. It's, uh, the mom and the, they lessened the charge, just like on some little bullshit. They lessened the charge, and he got some but, other but, but shit. It, it's still on on on. Oh, on it's the... on his background. You can't erase it. Wow, it's on his background. That's why he, he hate Kevo. He hate Kevo for that, but that's after the fact of everything that he tried to do. He really the hate came with him because Kevo kind of like little boyed him on a live one day. You know, say so he was a fan of Kevo, and Kevo is you know how he be. He was just little boyed him one day, and so Dime had this plan on getting Kevo. She wanted to, she, she she grew that hate for him. Now it's like. I'm about to fuck all this shit off. Like, fuck that. I'm burning the house down. He talking about some, we getting separate apartments. Now, imagine she went on, uh, Tasha Kelly, these motherfuckers talking about some, has a man, Kelly Rich, and his, uh, wife is homeless. She's sitting on the side of the SLS. <laughs> She's standing in the SLS monthly, talking about some, about sitting by the swimming pool. I'm homeless. And my, and what do you mean? This shit costs a motherfucker between eight to 15000 a month for you to stay in this bitch and get all type of room service and this and that while he prepared to get you another crib. Well, she got mad because his crib became available first. And he moved right in his shit and he like, you know, so she felt like, oh, this and that. So then it came to the point like, all right, damn, just, he gonna buy you a big ass house in McLean, Texas somewhere. She thought we was trying to get rid of him. Like, no, nah, but you go down there, if he spent 300000 it's like, you gonna have a mansion, the kids, take him, you know what I'm saying? You know, live your life. So her whole thing was Kevo. It wasn't about that money. It wasn't about nothing. It was just like, nope, I want to have this night. And when she found out it was totally over with, she wanted to burn the house down. Kevo was a smart motherfucker, you know, right? He's also like a little haggard. Like, you know, so so everything around him, you think you doing this and that behind his back, emails and this and that. He reading it. He watching it. He telling me, like, this bitch on some goofy shit, trying to link with this goofy ass nigga, trying to do some goofy content. Because if you watch, if you have a, of course, you didn't have time to watch that shit, but she was dropping content. Oh, I got a secret crush and just goofy shit all in the bench so just trying to agitate Kevo. Mind you, take the car, get out of here, take everything. Now she in his car screaming, oh, I got a new crush and wait till you see my new crush and this and that. Did she fuck up her whole situation? Because Man, was... she dropped the ball, man. And I did not want her to do that. Me and my family like, no, nah, like y'all keep that, you know what I'm saying? Like it's all good because he was cool. He's like, I'm just moving around. And I think at one point in time she was really cool with ever how he wanted to live. Miami is a different animal for black girls when they go down there, bro. What do you mean? Bro, it's like this. 
you a black chick, you look good in this net, but you got a ball in there as nigga. Y'all moved to Miami from some other town. It's going to be different. Oh, yeah. He has Lamborghinis. He's going outside by himself. Spans Jones oh, coming in. Oh, they're coming in. What? They about and to box look like paint. a little mama, like a little girl. Like, get out of here, little girl. You know what I'm saying? These big things were like, these motherfuckers coming through. And guess what? They rich. Kevo just thought, he thought rich women start coming at him. She couldn't compete with that act. I felt sorry for like, God damn. It's just like a broke ass nigga having a ball in there. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, and it's just like, gee, how you, and she meet another ball in there as niggas. Like, what are you? You better shut up and be happy you still got a beer room in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? To be honest. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But you were still getting off of cribs and all that shit. You'd rather do this. You'd rather, well, I'm going to go to Tasha K. I'm going to say I'm homeless. I'm going to show, I'm going to say you scammed your fans. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that. Oh, oh, all to the point where, oh, you hate this little boy? Well, I'm saying, I slept with him then. Who the fuck do a bunch of goofy shit and be like, a vlogger like, yeah, we just came from the hotel, the Holiday Inn, about the O'Hare Airport, that bitch, $88. What are you talking about? You flew up there, did some goofy shit and ruined your life. Then on 16, that shit backfired on 16, the way he wound up sleeping on the floor. He thought the, the Kevo content, to be, he thought that was going to take him through the roof. He talking to act. He, he, all like, when he talked to you, he feeling like, yeah, I'm winning. Like, his little ass, like, goofy as hell. We just looking at it like, we just be looking from afar like, damn, that shit goofy as hell. Like, and they not even paying attention. This nigga is, is a rape. Like, he got a rape in his background. Does Kevo even talk to Big Bomb anymore? Nope. No communication because of her. Mind you, he, he, he just had his daughter, but her, his son that they, they had... He still, you know, he still was trying to send for him and do right, you know what I'm saying? But she cut it off. After he had that the little girl, it's like, you can't see him no more because that's how motherfuckers do. Nothing to do with her. She she took her kids from being rich to back to Section 8 and sleeping on mama flows and shit. And them kids don't deserve that. We always said, all of us always said, like, man, they don't deserve that. She really could have just took the big ass crib and did what she wanted to do. Go go fuck 16 to do something out there at the mansion. Now you wind up on the floor, he wind up on the floor. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all ass tripping. This boy got real millions of dollars. Y'all, where you going against that? He don't care what nobody say. Oh, this was their big thing. We're going to show that he got his body done. Those revealing pictures. Remember, it was a whole thing. It's like, oh, my God. He didn't give a fuck. The goddamn Dr. Fum gave his ass that a million dollars just because of promotion of, of getting the body done. Kevo's pretty good with that. Like, you yeah, can't crazy, Kevo. but you can't, yeah. Kevo turned the content. <laughs> hey, uh, Charleston White. <clears throat> Cochrane Charlie. I'm the one named him Cochrane Charlie. Did Charles White send y'all a picture of his penis? Yes, he sent himself a, a, a video of himself oiled up and baby. It was like this. This sound is gonna sound funny, but I swear wait, to God, wait, wait, he didn't oil himself up. I'm for gonna the video. swear to God, he was oiled up, head to toe, in a bathroom, in a mirror, jacking himself off with a cock ring on. Did he do that because he was sending the video to y'all, or he just a video he had? No, he sent it to Kevo because he said Kevo flexed on him. And sent him some video with a bunch of money, like three, four hundred thousand, and showing his muscles and shit. So he said the only muscle that he had was his dick. So he said that it was funny and shit. But I'm just like, man, little bitty oily, man, he look like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. I thought at the time y'all were, I thought at the time y'all was setting up a boxing match. You and Dewberry or something. Dewberry, <laughs> you see what happened? Do do you think Dewberry want to sit up there? She wrestling around boxing. You see the way that man ran on that stage? That's how to do Barry. That's my I, that, now, mind you, that that's this. These are back then. Now, niggas is is, is cordial now, and cool. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm meeting them tomorrow in Chicago. We linking this shit. We fuck around. We went to the boxing match in Arizona together. All type of shit. You know, what I'm saying I, I fuck with them because I really understand what's going on. I ain't dumb. You know, I'm not a kid. Yeah, they're they're good at getting headlines. Oh yeah, so people was overlooking his friend Dewberry because in the beginning Charles and Wyatt do all this crazy talking about yeah I'm Dewberry. So I was looking up Dewberry like this nigga that went to jail. I it was a stone cold killer. No, bro. You sure, it's like an accident murder in a club, and then he told he went and <laughs> went and confessed it because he couldn't he couldn't deal with the fact of what he did. So he went and just turned himself in. He had to do that. Like I tell Dewberry, you get mad at me because I did I, I beat my murders and shit like that. The way your murders happened, you could have beat it the same way. Oh, he got a murder too. Yeah, he Damn. did eighteen years though. Damn. So he come home, you know, he's the the eighteen year homie and I, big dewberry. How did y'all <laughs> turn the back and forth between 
Charleston and Kevo into pretty much. Yeah, yeah, he said cool Kevo guys. is up. The latest thing he just said uh, on that 20, uh, yeah, he did a 20 he versus one. Bam and Kiwi. Yeah, Kiwi. <laughs> he just told the bitch, told us something. Yeah, because if you if you ever tried to go be on my back and date Bam and Kiwi, that's my up. I hate him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't, the nigga's crazy, man. But he really fuck with us, though. Well, how did that get cool? Like, how was that, how was that first call? Like, I mean, I mean, Motherfuckers just talking. Motherfuckers gonna say some wild shit. I brought Dewberry to life though, cause I, I did the say shit, cheese shit. It went viral. I was just like, I brought up Dewberry, and everybody like, dude, like, then they looked into it, and they like, Charles a white homie. I'm like, his ass country, slow ass Dewberry with the little two gold teeth right there, and this and that. Like, his ass half retarded. That was a killer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I thought it was a killer. But that, that's not, nah, Dewberry ain't no killer, man. Dewberry, good old boy. Man, he turned himself in like a good old boy who should when he made a mistake. So shit. All right, so you you roll, you roll, you roll with Kevin most of the time. Mm -hmm. How'd you meet up Flacco? Oh, shout out to Sixteen Shot him. The whole the whole ordeal of him trying to overly get into it with Flacco made me brought attention to me to Flacco, and then I got to get a credit to AD. Like, hey, you need to manage Flacco. You need to you need to get in Flacco life. I thought for a second people were gonna try to bully Flacco. They they do and they try they you know and try to like run him out the game like yo listen you can't voice your opinions and that's a very popular tactic when they see somebody has an opinion that seems to resonate. I'm with just people. not gonna lie. I've been talking to Flacco way before. Like I I just told him I asked him a question. Do he think that he'll flourish more on the East Coast than he doing on that West Coast because the lack of respect they have for him at yeah. his job. You got somebody like Almighty. No disrespect to nobody. Oh, they take it how they want. I don't give a fuck. But you got somebody as uh. An almighty. Oh it's God. like sitting an almighty right here telling act like, man, shut up, man. You don't really know. It's like, nigga, y'all don't see what y'all got right here. So y'all devalue him, really. Yeah. So I've always thought it was hard for him to be, maybe live up to maybe the potential he has because in LA, you can't really just give an opinion. And and granted, like, it's not man, like that's you, bullshit. And that's just like, all right, if it's like that, nigga, well, go somewhere else and shoot to the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You ain't got to deal with that. You ain't nothing to do with none of that shit. You a content creator. It's like, what if you worked on a local news channel? You yeah, think yeah. niggas rolling up on a local news channel, motherfuckers? With they? Yeah, I, I be thinking about to jump that nigga sometimes. I'm like, yo. I be feeling careful. like that too. But I know eight people like AD. I know people like Wack. Yeah. They out there. They 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 got that boy. He he good. But is he really good as far as uh, his value or his ceiling or where he gonna go? I asked him, do you think you reached your ceiling at no jumper? Is it time to do different things or explore different options? Because you're never supposed to stay in the same lane. You're supposed, you're supposed to level up, right? I think even this trip, though, is a chance for him to level up. For I, sure. I think he's seeing um, opportunities and ways that he could excel in. One thing I realized about him, just even doing him doing content in the last day or two, is that the only good version of Flacco is you have to let him be him. I tell people that all the time. You can't, you can't put him in a box. And again, you don't necessarily have to be like, Hey, we're going to war about every opinion, but we're going to, we're going to respect the fact that you have these opinions and your opinion is your opinion. And we don't got to agree with it, but you be able to voice your opinion. Yeah. So he need to be somewhere where when he voices his opinion, he don't have to get drilled or or he got to check himself before he say something. He's not in the game. He owes the streets nothing. So he should be able to opinionate himself. That's how I felt about you back then. Yeah, yeah. Like, you could say what the fuck you want to say. Is he out here killing motherfuckers or do he really, like, if you can't tell him, no, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right. you got to let the, you gotta let that content roll. You got to let it be what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? No, I agree. What are you doing in Chicago with Charles White? Oh, he got a comedy show up there. He just hit me with, you know, like I say, today my birthday. I'm gonna fly home because I just got a new crib in Atlanta. But I'm gonna fly home, I'll spend some time with my daughter. Have you ever been to a comedy show? This? Nope. It's first time. First time. How often does Kevin go back to uh, Chicago? Kevin's uh, Miami now, man. Yeah, he Miami the fuck out. Not, not, not. Miami ain't enough. You know that, right? You know where he at right now. I mean, no, no, Dubai. He's Over there Dubai with Sammy. Now. Yeah. Oh my god. Him and Sammy. You, you know our homie Sammy. Yeah, Sammy to turn my boy out, man. Sam, try, he tried to turn me out. They want to <laughs> get did. over there and be citizens and shit. Yo, he did have a child recently, though, right? Yeah, uh, yes, he um, did. Baby girl. Uh, uh, how is that like changing him? Kevo got kids. He been having kids. Oh yeah, I forgot he got mad kids. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, thinking Nick Cannon, he got nigga. <laughs> what about kids? Yeah, he about like six, I think. 
God damn. I have some shit like that. I forgot he in Chicago, nigga. I'm over here thinking like he on the second kid. Holy shit. Is there anything I missed? What did I miss? What did I miss? I feel, I feel like I, I, I always I gotta do my little last check before we get out of here. How long have we been talking? Two hours? Oh, okay, that's light. That's light. That's light. You know, I, I talk for days. Yeah, I know. I usually talk till I see the people in the background. I see them tired. And I'm like, all right. I'm, I'm just I'm 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 excited to see what happened after uh this part one. Part two, I just can't even about the phantom with you and Flacco. But this part one, I think you know it's gonna put him in a different light. I don't know yeah. what I don't know what God is gonna take him after that. I don't know if LA ceiling is high enough after that. Well well, I think he's gonna come to a fork in the road. He's gonna have to either clam up and tone it down, or he's gonna have Ain't to no himself. doing that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be around if that was the case. I ain't gonna lie to you. Let me see. It's gonna go way worse before it go toned down. <laughs> Let me see what else. You were talking about North Memphis. Mm. What are you talking about North Memphis? What's going on in North, North Memphis? Memphis? Oh, when we fuck around with no North Memphis, they out there killing shit like a motherfucker. Hmm. Long live Dolph, though. Okay. Yeah, I think I kind of got everything. Let me chop it up. I mean, you know, whatever it is, we'll catch it down the road. You know, we'll we, catch it down the you road. know, I was trying to, um, Kevo, we coming with a podcast and shit. You know, I had dabbled in it just. Kevo should have been at a podcast. That's what I tell him. Kevo should have a vlog. He should have a lot of things. Like, Kevo is a truly entertaining um, persona and a guy who I respect because he he's true to having his life be the content. And a lot yeah. of times yeah. people, they're fake. They don't allow their, they're never vulnerable enough yeah. to have their life be the content. Whether he's getting a tattoo, whether he's talking yeah. about, you know, surgery, whether yeah. he's, he's dealing with situations that's happened to him, like with mm-hmm. baby mamas. Yeah. A lot of times people lie and create facades, try to like, nah, he, he won open, he keeps it, he keeps it a solid motherfucker. Gabo definitely is. Mm. Definitely is. All right, man. Uh, listen, we're going to call the raps on this. Uh, I, listen, big folks, I appreciate you. Hey, nigga, I uh, appreciate you for everything, for our city and all. No, listen, man. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, you know, y- y- your life is a fucking movie, man. <laughs> like, I'm me, just happy to still be here. Shit, I could tell. <laughs> me sitting here with you, it's like, it's like an unbelievable story. But yeah, mm-hmm. uh, if people do want to find you, how can they find you on social media? Uh, and what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, CEO Big Folks underscore? Uh, you don't yeah, know your Instagram? You don't be, you know be on the gram? I'm on there. What's my, hey, little man, what's my shit? Yeah, CEO Big Folks. Yeah, CEO Big Folks underscore. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so y'all, y'all go check him out, man. Uh, listen, we'll definitely get a part two of this, get an update, you know, in, in, yeah. in the soon time coming. But other than that, man, I thank y'all for watching another episode of Off the Record Podcast. It's been That's Big up. Act, Big Folks, the biggest podcast, <laughs> the biggest. The biggest. The one shot rack, man. We finally clarified a few things, man. I'm out.